watching Channel 4, proud to be owned by NBC. The year was 1961. The Colorado Buffaloes stampeded through the Big 8 season undefeated. Quarterback Gail Widener led a balanced CU offensive attack that featured All-American wide receiver Jerry Hillebrand. The defense, anchored by linebacker Joe Romick, All-American, Rhodes Scholar and current CU professor. The 61 Buffs were the Big 8's best. And now, 28 years later, sophomore quarterback Darian Hagan leads the Golden Buffaloes into Manhattan, Kansas. CU searching for its second outright Big 8 championship. But unlike 1961, the stakes are much higher. Bill McCartney's team is after its 11th victory of the season and a national championship. Plateaus never achieved in 100 years of Colorado football. The Buffs' final regular season hurdle on the road to number one, the Wildcats from Kansas State University. We obviously need to win and continue to play well and uh, so that we can set, set up uh, the opportunity to play Notre Dame in Miami and have it be for big stakes. Channel 4 Sports presents University of Colorado football. Today, from KSU Stadium in Manhattan, it's the University of Colorado Buffaloes versus the Kansas State University Wildcats. Today's game is brought to you in part by Shelter Insurance, where personal service is a matter of pride. By Federal Express, the best way to ship it over there. By your Denver area Honda dealers. And also by these proud companies for Colorado. Samsonite, our strengths are legendary. And Remax, take a step above the crowd. Good afternoon from Manhattan. Ron Zapolo along with Dave Logan as Colorado looks to put a perfect slant on the end of this regular season as they go against Kansas State. A very cold, windy, but sunny day here in Manhattan as the Buffs, I hope, are ready to play. Well, I hope they are, too. I guess this is what they call blustery. I mean, you look a little bit like Colombo. I'm standing up here freezing. Colorado's going to be plenty warm on the field. A, a chance for a perfect season. They've never won 11 games in the history of CU football a good opportunity to do so this afternoon. And of course, a lot of the Colorado players looking to get some own individual milestones like Darian Hagan, who could join the 1,000-1,000 club. That's right, Darian Hagan needs 152 yards rushing, less than 70 yards passing to, uh, to be the fifth player. We figured Jerry Godowski of the Brass will accomplish that with 97 yards rushing against OU today. But Hagan's been a terrific player in this is sophomore year. He's a Heisman Trophy mentioning, and I think Darian Hagan certainly has been the key to CU's performance this year. Now, Colorado, a 42-point favorite coming into the game and coming off a lot of big wins. How do you get up for Kansas State here? Well, normally I think that would be tough for them. I, I think this year, certainly, when you say national championship, that's all you need to say. They have to come in here, take care of business, just go through the motions and make sure they do exactly what they need to do and then focus their attention on the Orange Bowl and Notre Dame. Like every year, Kansas State is struggling. They have new coach, Bill Snyder. They got one victory. They have not won in 25 straight Big 8 games, so they can take all the chances they want. Well, Bill Snyder said that uh, Colorado is the best football team that they've played this year, and certainly he's been in a tough situation. Ten years, the offensive coordinator at Iowa, so he's familiar with Colorado because... CU played Iowa last year. CU went to Iowa City and beat the Hawkeyes 24 to 21. But to say the least, it's a, a very tough task indeed here in Manhattan. All right, we're glad you're with us. Come on back. The start of the game, just a minute away. Colorado 10 and 0, 6 and 0 in the Big Eight versus Kansas. title since 1961 their second ever buffs 10 and 0 for the first time ever of course an 11th victory today would be an all-time school record and if cu wins it it'll be their fourth orange bowl uh, appearance in their history their first orange bowl appearance since 1976 they are one and two in the orange bowl four and oh this year on the road with wins at washington iowa state oklahoma and oklahoma state for more on what will happen this afternoon let's go down now to our on the field reporter, Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you, Ron. Speaking of the Orange Bowl, I have Executive Director Steve Hatchell here with me. I know, Steve, you've got things in order, and you're looking for a Colorado victory to set up a national championship game New Year's night. Well, this is one of the reasons why we have the Big A Conference is our tie-up the Orange Bowl, because they provide us a champion every year that 
we think will set up a national championship picture for us. And this is really a terrific story this year with the Colorado Buffaloes. And uh, we think it's going to carry on the tradition we've had of having outstanding football games on New Year's Day. I guess since the 70s, you've had what, seven national championship games in the Orange Bowl? Yes, and we had four of the national championship games in the 80s alone. And we'd like to start the 90s with uh, with our another national championship. I know you're watching another game very close to the day, Notre Dame at Penn State. We have our president, Tom Wood, is there at that game. And we'd very much like to get uh, Notre Dame into our game because they are the highest rated team available to us. And we think that Notre Dame would do a lot in our game. And uh, we think uh, Notre Dame versus Colorado would be a terrific matchup, particularly if they remain one and two. So today's an important game for us uh, from the Notre Dame standpoint. And it's a tough place for them to play. They're 0-8 against uh, Penn State and Miami when they close out the season with those two teams. So it'll be a tough day for them. I know you know about the incredible support the Buffs have been getting back in the Colorado area. Why don't you explain to the fans back there the ticket policy? There's only 12,500 tickets available to see you. Well, we view 12,500 as a lot of tickets. Uh, when you're a, a ball like the Orange Bowl, we're 56 years old. We have a mailing list that uh, requires us to, to sell to a lot of people around the country. We sell tickets to over 35 states in the United States. We have a lot of foreign visitors who come in at no Miami Beach, no Miami. Uh, we have to hold one third of our stadium for both of the uh, teams that come in. And frankly, that's a lot of tickets. All right, Steve, thank you very much. We hope to see you in the locker room after the ball game, after the bus victory. Back upstairs to Ron and Dave. All right, Mark, thanks very much. As we're about to get underway here, 36 degrees, and it is somewhat windy making it feel a little bit colder here but it's sunny clear should be a great afternoon for football Dave when we walked in a couple hours ago as you look at the series record dominated by Colorado they won the last four and of course last year 56 to 14 when we walked in we walked on the turf and it was unusually hard yeah it, it is very very hard I think uh, for a couple of reasons uh, it's relatively new it's a tartan surface and you've got uh, the weather factor and it's, it's really uh, much like playing on concrete that's painted green. So hopefully everybody can get out of this football game unscathed. See you will receive. They will start to your left, going left to right as we start here. Bill McCartney, the head coach in his eighth season, now over 500 for the first time at 45, 44, and 1. But he is 38 and 19 in his last four years for Kansas State. To Bill Snyder in his first year after 10 years as the offensive coordinator at Iowa. He is 1-9. Their one win coming here against North Texas. Darian Hagan, of course, we talked about him. He needs 152 yards rushing and 67 yards passing to go into that 1,000 club. 1,000 on the ground and 1,000 through the air. As you look at the man who is about to engineer his team one final time during this regular season and then on to the postseason. He's done a terrific job, and you look across the field to Bill Snyder. Snyder, of course, taking over a program that, uh, in his own estimation, that not many players, a uh, lack of tra tradition. They've got some financial problems here with the, with the football team. And uh, if you think back to not so long ago, Colorado came here to end the season in 1984, and Kansas State beat CU 38-6. to So it's been a remarkable turnaround and one that Bill Snyder, the head coach of the Wildcats, can look at and maybe a glimmer of hope will come out of it. Maybe he can do something similar here in Manhattan. David Kruger ready to kick off for the Wildcats. MJ Nelson and Mike Pritchard deep for the Buffs. Is Kansas State Stadium seats about 42,000. We are nowhere near that here this afternoon. The crowd expected of between 17 and 20,000 as we are underway from Manhattan. This is Mike Pritchard across the 20 with a big hole. Pritchard across the 40 and out to the 42. He loses the football, but they rule him down there. Fine return by Mike Pritchard as he was brought down by Richard Boyd. Offensively for the bus. After that 31-yard return by Pritchard, Hagan the quarterback, Kissick the fullback, Pritchard the wingback. They've got Eric the enemy, but it'll be J.J. Flanagan with the start. We should see, though, the enemy. Campbell. The wide receiver, Perrick, the tight end, and the unsung heroes, the offensive line, Coleman, Garten, Lewenberg, Muhlenberg, and Vanderpool. First and 10 from the 41.
This is Flanagan right up the middle. Big hole for KJ. He's got one man to beat. And Flanagan is pulled out at the one yard line. Tyrese Hurd made the touchdown saving tackle. So Dave on the first play, Colorado. Nearly a touchdown. Well, J.J. Flanagan needed 59 yards coming into the game to uh, get to the 1,000-yard mark. He got 58 yards on this run. Mike Pritchard in motion. They come back with the isolation to this weak side. And you can see Flanagan is well into the secondary before anybody gets a hand on him. A good job of closing by Tyrese Hurts, who has very good quickness, the fastest player on the Kansas State team. He bumps J.J. out on the one-yard line. First and goal, we played 18 seconds. There's Flanagan, he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Two plays, 59 yards, thanks to J.J. Flanagan. Well, if there's any doubt that CU would come out certainly ready to play, and Kansas State has been a team this year that has had many, many problems stopping the run. Nebraska rushed for over 500 yards against this Kansas State team. Take a look at a good individual blocking. Kissing gets on the linebacker, Flanagan, into the end zone on a two-play drive. And Culbertson has the conversion, and we're 21 seconds into the game, and Colorado already out in front. J.J. Flanagan over the 1,000-yard mark. They've never had in the history of this football program two runners that have rushed for over 1,000 yards in the same season. Flanagan is there now, and... Uh, it, uh, Darian Hagan needs about 152 yards to make it there this season as well. Wonder if Flanagan is okay He's stretching over there on the sidelines. We take a look at the run as you uh, you see from the end zone look and a good job of coming down. Garten seals the nose guard and right behind Kissy comes Flanagan. And once he breaks the initial plane, not too many guys are able to catch J.J. Flanagan. I'm wondering if he may still be a little bit tight. You come out and obviously get warmed up before a game, but rarely in a football game will you break that kind of run this early. Sometimes you're not as loose at this particular stage of the contest as, as you should be, as you certainly would be well into the first quarter. So a very quiet crowd here. Got even more silence. Flanagan off of two plays, gives the Buffs the lead. Culbertson will kick off seven, Tyrese Hurts, and 20, Dimitri Scott, deep for the Wildcats. Culbertson will be kicking into a wind of about five to 10 miles an hour, so Kansas State will have the win when they take over. Paul Watson, their sophomore quarterback, who started the last couple games for the injured Carl Straw, will be at the controls. This is a low line drive kick into the wind. You can see the problems. Scott picks it up. He's across the 20, across the 30 to the 31, where Atkins, number 19, and Chad Brown, 34, make the tackle. So Kansas State, on their first position, will have good field position at the 31. First to the CU. Two plays, 59 yards in 15 seconds is J.J. Flanagan. One over for the touchdown. Paul Watson, number 14, 6'2", 195-pound sophomore from Kansas City. The pitch goes to Pat Jackson. He's out to about the 34. Kansas State offensively. That is not Carl Straw. It'll be Paul Watson, at quarterback. Michael Smith, their fine sophomore flanker with Pat Jackson and Gow on the running backs. Hernandez, the split end. Jones, the tight end. And Watson is out to about the 34, about the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third and seven. Kansas State going quickly without a huddle. Here's the pitch, and it's a handoff back to Watson, throwing deep. And it is intercepted by Atkins of CU back at the 26. So Colorado has the ball. Freshman Doug Atkins makes the first turnover of the game. Kansas State trying to make something happen early. 
you can see the, uh, the toss back. It almost doesn't happen. And Watson gets rid of this one right before Alfred Williams gets there. And Michael Smith never was open. You can see CU with three players back and Adkins able to, to catch the ball fairly easily. So Colorado has the ball on their 27, their third offensive play of the afternoon. Here's the pitch to Flanagan. Bounces outside. It's run out at the 27. Marcus Miller, the free safety number 16, tied to the big eight lead with four interceptions. Stop Flanagan. The pickup of six will be pickup of three, make it. Second and seven. Davenport, Killian, Williams, Crawford, Alexander. The linebackers are Barta and Patterson. The defensive secondary, Kurt, Scott, Eric Harper, and Marcus Miller. Kansas State, again, has had a very, very tough time this year stopping the run. Not big enough inside. Both inside linebackers had about 205 pounds, and you can expect CU just to pound them the entire afternoon. Flanagan up the middle, across the 30 to the 32. Robert Hummel in 97, a freshman tackle made the stop. It'll be third. And about five as Eric Bianami checks into the ball game for Flanagan. And Derek's first uh, action since that one pass against Nebraska. But I think Bill would like to see Eric Bieniemy play a little bit. Now, this is a very, very hard surface. Again, keep that in mind. And not one that you want to bring a guy back from an injury unless you have to. Give him a few plays and then get him out. Hagan's got it, cuts it up himself, breaks a tackle, and he'll be close to a first down. Ball carry number three, Darian Hagan. Stop by number five. Going to take Eric Bieniemy out of the game now, Matt Bell in replacing uh, J.J. Flanagan. I just don't think this is not only the type of game, but the surface that you want to break Eric Benemy in First in a situation like that. Let that leg yards. heal, and he's got five or six weeks after this afternoon to get ready for Notre Dame. So Hagan has the first down. Ball is out at the Colorado 38. The handoff to Flanagan across the 40, running hard inside up near the 44-yard line before he's stacked up by the middle of that Kansas State defense. Don't know that you'll see Colorado do anything fancy this afternoon. Now, some think that maybe CU should open it up a bit and give Notre Dame something to think about. They do have two scouts here this afternoon watching the Buffaloes, but when you see a club just line up in their conventional offense and run between the tackles over and over and over again. Clearly, they're the dominant team, and I, I wouldn't imagine you'll see Bill going to the bag of tricks today. Second four for the Buffs. Ball at the 44. Hagan falls down at the 42. So a mix-up by the Buffs, a loss of two, and it'll be third and a long four. It's kind of a lonely feeling as a quarterback when you turn and you see nothing. No fullback, no tailback, nothing but you and the football. And judging from the way everybody goes, watch everybody move to your right at the screen. And Darian Hagan looks to the left, where's my fullback, and then uh, falls down before he can gather his feet. 11.25 and counting to go in this first quarter. Colorado out in front, 7 nothing. On third and five, Hagan's got it, cuts it up. He's got a first down and more into Kansas State territory at the 47. by number 32, C.J. Masters. Masters, number 32, the free safety and made the stop as the chains move into Kansas State territory. Bill Snyder this week said Darian Hagan is the one guy who's First made Colorado a national, national championship team. Yard. You can see that he's had some help this year behind some good blocking up front. He ducks behind Garden. You see Mike Pritchard out in front trying to get a block. But Hagan certainly is the guy that makes this offense much, much better than it's ever been. Nelson, the wide receiver, first and ten. Flanagan, big hole up the middle, across the 40, down to the 33, where Masters made the stop. But another Colorado first down. You can see what it looks like if you're on the ground. You'll see a surge of gold helmets. And they're guys with big bodies <laughs> behind the helmets. Landing it well into the secondary before anybody gets a hand on it. You mentioned the offensive line. They really have done a terrific job. You can see J.J. Flanagan with his 1,000 yards. Lewenberg, Uhlenberg, Vanderpool, Garten, 
and Coleman. Five guys that have performed well this year. They've stayed relatively injury free and you've got to give them a lot of success for all the uh, yards that CU's been able to accumulate on the ground. So CU has it at the Kansas State 31 there. 10.50 to go in this first quarter as Colorado has moved at will here on their first two possessions. You're going to see everybody play for Colorado that made the trip. And then some. In fact, Dave, if you would like to go down again in a few reps, I'm sure by the fourth quarter, they might let me in. They might let you in there. J.J. Flanagan, six carries for 86 yards so far. The one thing about it, if this game were to be played in Boulder, I think Kansas State would stand a much better chance because Bill could go a bit deeper into the right. roster. He'd play third-team guys, but they only bring 60 on road trips, and although he'll play them, they're second-team guys mainly that uh, want to do well. Campbell, the bottom of your screen, the wide receiver on first and 10, George Hemingway running hard inside the 25, down to about the 23. Price made the stop, sophomore cornerback. Pickup of eight, it'll be second and two. Of course, all the CU backs in a game like this want to get in there and enjoy the fun and pad their statistics. It just looks like a pass the way they're lined up. They have not attempted a pass yet. The handoff to Flanagan. He's got room up the middle, inside the 20, down to the 18. Robert Hubble, number 97, made the stop. So another Colorado first down as they methodically drive it down towards the Kansas State goal line. Last two or three weeks, when they actually break the power bone, the line might push it up in a two-point stance outside the tackle. They've thrown the ball, maybe giving their uh, next opponent a couple of things to work on. You don't want to get locked into a pass or run situation with any given formation. Hagan's got it, still has it, cuts it inside, has Flanagan behind him, and Hagan is down to the one-yard line. Hagan ran it nicely. He had Flanagan behind him, kept it, and put it down to the one where it's first and goal. Take a look at it as Hagan comes right into your lap, run the option. The nice thing about this play, you see Eric Kissing looking for somebody to block. Hagan always keeps that relationship with Flanagan. He's got the ball right in front of him so he can still pitch it if he needs to. Flanagan makes sure that he turns that corner at about the same time Darian Hagan does. You saw that play work to perfection against Nebraska for a touchdown. Darian Hagan, four carries and 33 yards as he tries to get to 153 for 1,000 on the season. On first and goal, Hagan keeps it. And he's into the end zone for a touchdown. So Colorado has scored twice in the first six minutes. This is touchdown number 15 for Darian Hagan. Bounces inside and tough to stop that option play from a yard or two out. Colorado this year when they've been down in third and less than one or two, and of course that wasn't third down, but they're 28 of 28, so they don't, uh, they don't miss many opportunities when they get to short yardage situations. The conversion is up and through, 9.05 to play in the first quarter as Colorado has jumped out in front. Nine minutes and five seconds to go in the first quarter. If you're joining us late, you've already missed a lot. Flanagan from 58 yards out. Ran it to the one, then went over. After an interception by Doug Atkins, Hagan drove him down, scored himself, and Colorado up 14 to nothing. This is Dimitri Scott across the 20. Bounces outside to the 26 where he's run out. Kansas State likes to throw the football. That's what they'll try and do this afternoon. 10 plays, 73 yards. Kansas State, the last couple of weeks, they, they've had pretty good success throwing the ball. As you mentioned, Paul Watson against Oklahoma, 23 of 37 for 273 yards. And he, he's thrown for almost 550 yards the last couple of weeks, largely in part due to their inability to run the football at all. As you see the stats there on Watson. Here's the pitch to Jackson. 
across the 30, out to the 31. Flag is down as Arthur Walker made the tackle. Jackson, 87 carries, averaging 3.7 a carry. Scored three times, as long as 22 is called in on the Wildcats, will wipe out Jackson's first down game. Jackson's kind of an all-purpose back. He gives them uh, a little bit of everything, can run it reasonably well, and a good pass receiver when they utilize him in that manner. Kansas State now just looking for anybody that steps forward and does a decent job offensively. It's pretty tough, too, when you're down two scores, Dave, right off the bat. Well, they've certainly had a lot of practice. A lot of experience of, of coming from behind. It's been a tough go for Kansas State. They're fifth-year guys, guys that have been in this program for five years, have been through four different coaches. Now, you can't have much stability in a situation like that. Jim Dickey, Lee Moon, Stan Parrish, and, of course, now Bill Snyder. First and 18 for Kansas State. The draw to Sonny Ray Jones. Terry Johnson has him from behind, wraps him up at the 23. A pickup of five. It'll be second. And 13. Jones, a sophomore from Ravenna, Ohio, 5'11, 185 pounds. Good idea, of course, to try to keep that pressure off your quarterback to run some draws and even come out and try to establish some sort of running game. Something that's quite evident early the disparity in speed between the two teams. Bill Snyder commented on that this week, saying that Colorado had 11 guys that ran 4 4 or better. Kansas State doesn't have any. So it's, it's tough to coach something that you can't teach, and that, of course, is speed. One man to watch is Michael Smith, number 88, who's having a fine year for Kansas State. We'll develop that story as we go along. As Watson scrambling, being pressed by Walker. Looks, gets it away. Incomplete. He was looking for Jackson. Julian Hayward was back in the coverage, but Kansas State nearly hit a long one. I think defensively, most coordinators will tell you when a quarterback breaks the, the pocket, breaks contain, a lot of bad things can happen to your defense. Had Jackson kept on running, he might have caught that pass. I think he underestimated the strength of Paul Watson's arm and actually flattened out his route a little bit too quickly, couldn't get back to the seam fast enough, and had the ball glance off his fingers. Hey, Dave, we're seeing a lot of Hayward and Atkins, who are reserves very early here. Of course, Kansas State wants to throw the buffs in their nickel package a lot. Watson has the tight end Campbell, and he couldn't hold on. So Kansas State will have to punt. And that's a pass, obviously, that you just have to reach up and catch. Chris Cobb is on, 62 punts. He's averaging 40 yards even. He's had one block. Jeff Campbell, back at his 30. Gets it off, and this is a beautiful punt by Cobb. Campbell driven back to his own 19. Gets a block, makes a cut. Some room down the sidelines, and he's finally brought down at the 41. 7-14 to go in the first quarter. Colorado's had it twice, and they've scored twice. Back in Manhattan, 7-14 to go in the first quarter. Colorado has scored twice. Flanagan and Hagen have done the honors. They have it now for a third time this afternoon. At their own 42, as you look at Bill McCartney who is now over that 500 mark. Hagan runs the option, and down to a knee, and down he goes. John Crawford, who leads the Wildcats with four sacks, a senior from East St. Louis, makes the stop on Hagan back at the 39 for a loss of three. Good play by Kansas State, and they got the one thing that you have to when you play an option team. Penetration on the outside forced Hagen to stop before he could get to the corner and either make a decision as to whether to pitch or to keep it. So second and 13 for the Buffs. Hagen attempting his first pass of the afternoon and it's incomplete. 
He was looking for John Parrick. It'll be third and 13. Wildcats, it has, it has been a struggle. They are winless in their last 25 Big 8 games, 0-24-1. They've lost 15 straight. Earlier this year, they snapped a 30-game winless streak. They won that game against North Texas. Can't get the number of the man that is down. Kind of nice you mentioned the uh, North Texas State victory and uh, of course everybody that witnessed the Colorado Nebraska game knows the goalpost came down they came down here in Manhattan as they nice. got the only victory of the year that the fans poured on the field they mobbed the players and that is nice because you I mean you haven't had too many chances to celebrate celebrate a victory if you've been a Kansas State football player over the years this telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC and the National Broadcasting Company it is intended for the private use of our audience any reproduction or rebroadcast of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC is prohibited. Ramon Davenport, number 94, was the man down. He's being helped off, but we've got a minute. Let's give you some scores. First quarter, Minnesota 7, Michigan nothing. That would be a shocker. Duke 24, North Carolina nothing, second quarter. Georgia Tech 17, Wake Forest nothing, second quarter. Auburn leads Georgia, 3-0 first quarter. Columbia out in front of Brown, 7-0 first quarter. And Louisville leads Boston College, 10-7, second quarter. And we'll keep you up to date throughout the afternoon. Glad you're with us here on Channel 4 as the Buffs look to make it 11-0 and then head to Miami. Hagan. Oh. He had Parrick and couldn't get it to him. It'll be third and 13. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mark McIntyre. Thank you very much, Ron. Earlier on the second CU series, you saw Eric being in the ball game. Don't expect to see him anymore today. I talked to him on the sidelines. He said he snuck into the ball game. Coach Max saw him and told him to get out of there. And so Coach Max not real happy with Eric being in right now. Probably will not play the rest of the game. That right fibula is still a little sore. Back upstairs. Thanks, Mark. So Biennemi made a cameo appearance and will not be back. <laughs> Michael Smith is deep, waiting for the punt by Ruin. Calls for and makes the fair catch at the Kansas State 22. To Eric Biennemi, sometimes his enthusiasm, Dave, uh, gets the best of him. Well, I remember when uh, when CU scored against Oklahoma, the last, the clinching touchdown, the enemy sprinted across the field, and the referee was chasing him and pointing and telling him, you've got to get back to the sideline, had the flag in his hand, but the enemy loves the game, and he's certainly been a big, big part of CU's success this year. First and 10 for the Wildcats, 6.14 to go. They've got it on their own 23, and off to Jones. Out to about the 28th, Terry Johnson, and Gary Howe combined to bring him down. A five-yard pickup, second and five. Remember a few years back, five, six years ago, Broncos playing the Raiders in L.A. Keith Bishop was supposed to be out, but snuck into the game to make the uh, snaps on the punts and the field goals, yep. unbeknownst to Dan Reeves. Sometimes guys will do that. In that case, though, I think Dan was very appreciative. Yeah, he was very happy. To see, and then went down and made the tackle That's right. on a punt. There's the handoff to Jackson, breaks one tackle, but is thrown down. Walker hit him first, and Alfred Williams finished him off. Kansas State, as we mentioned, they're, they're not going to be able to establish a running game against Colorado. No player on the Wildcat team averaging more than 3.7 yards a carry. They throw the ball much more effectively, and you can see good penetration. That time by Arthur Walker, Alfred Williams right there to snuff out the play. Alfred Williams really having a fine year. Third and seven for Kansas State. And down goes Watson. Arthur Walker with a sack with an assist from Canavis McGee. Hey, Walker, Williams, and McGee are all going to look for plenty of sacks today. But you can give Arthur Walker in the front four a great deal of credit, but this basically is a coverage sack. Watson will go back. Good protection. Stands in the pocket, waits for something to happen, and you just can't wait that long against a good pass-rushing outfit, and Colorado has shown the ability to be that this year. Arthur Walker, his seventh sack of the season. Another one of the unsung heroes is Cobb. Gets off another pretty good punt. 
Campbell at the 29. Across the 40. And out to the 47. There's a flag down back at the 42. C.J. Masters making the tackle on Campbell. The flag, though, back in the area of where it will be on Colorado. Well, they're going to call a clip on Eric Hamilton, the uh, freshman free safety. I'm not so certain that this call is a correct one. Hamilton blocked inside. We'll take a look at it when we come back. After a 54-yard punt, Colorado will have it with 4.16 to go in the first quarter. Colorado takes over first and 10 from their own 26-yard line. Darian Hagan, the Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback. Hagan keeps it and has plenty of room across the 40, out to midfield where Tyrese Hurds, the left corner, finally runs him out. But a 24-yard gain and a first down for Darian Hagan. Remember, Hagan needs 152 yards rushing. Hagan's done this all year. Now watch the block by Jeff Campbell as he comes right into the, the picture on the right side. Right there, Campbell just engages Tyrese Hurds and forces Hurds to hand fight Campbell. That gives Darian Hagan a chance to run. Ball is right at midfield. Hagan. The pitch to Flanagan. J.J. down to the 43. Hurds again made the tackle and made a, a nice open field tackle on Flanagan. Pick up a seven. Second down and three. Flanagan during the course of the year really has done a nice job of once he gets the pitch, making a decision and making it quickly. Good fake inside. Now Flanagan with one man to beat doesn't stop and tiptoe. After the contact, he makes four extra yards. That's what you have to have from that back on the pitch. 325 to go in this first quarter. The handoff to Kissick. He's down close to a first down. They have to get to the 40. CU this year really has done a terrific job offensively, obviously. They've scored more points than any other CU team. They've scored more rushing touchdowns than any team in CU history. 44 times they've been inside the opponent's 20, and they have come away with 37 touchdowns, which is a remarkable percentage when you talk about the rest of college football. Third and a foot for Colorado. Hagan easily has the first down. He's, he's down to about the Kansas State 38. A cold, windy, but sunny day here in Manhattan. This will be the last cold and windy game they play this year. Though. That's right. Next one will be in uh, a night a night contest in a warm climate. Intensity level will be a little different for that ball game too. So will the opposition. <laughs> First and ten for the Buffs. They've got it at the 38. Hagan wants to throw. Lops it out for Pritchard. Mike is caught from behind at the seven. First and goal for the Buffs. Obviously, Colorado is a superior team to Kansas State, but it's going to be important as CU focuses on the Orange Bowl for Darian Hagan to get some rhythm in his passing. Now, he's been high on two throws. This throw is a nice adjustment while the ball's in the air by Mike Pritchard. I think you certainly want that quarterback to be able to hit key passes. They will have to do that on New Year's Day night. Pritchard's been a terrific performer this year. Great blocker, guy that carries the football when he's asked to, and one of the best receivers on the team. Danny Needham made the touchdown-saving tackle on Pritchard. That was the Buffs' first completion. They're throwing into a stiff win. Hagan has it, cuts it up, down to about the three. Anthony Williams, the nose tackle, a junior from Flint, Michigan, made the stop. Second goal for the Buffs, then at 35 to go in this first quarter. We were talking about scores and, and the drives this year by CU. Darian Hagan has engineered 95 drives 
57 of those have resulted in a score. Now, that's 61% of your drives, which is a phenomenal percentage. They just get points usually every time they take the uh, field. Hagan breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, but the third time is the charm. As Price, William Price, nails him back at the 11-yard line. That's a loss of eight, and it'll be third and goal. Price had a lot of help, though. Good job inside. You'll see Price sneak through. It forces Hagen a corner blitz from the outside as number 28, Maurice Henry, was coming from the weak side and got there before Darian could make a choice. Third and goal from the 11. Michael Simmons in the game as a wide receiver. Hagen. He'll run. And he's hit at the five and brought down. Joseph Boone, number 52, made the stop on Hagen, and the Buffs will attempt a field goal. Well, the Buffs with that little delay action. Kissick with a good block that gives Hagen time, but nobody opened up. Darian, Darian just trying to find his way into the end zone. Of course, when you're trying to make it from some 14 yards, chances are you're not going to be successful. First quarter has come to an end, so when we come back, Culbertson, who has been just about perfect the last five, six weeks, will attempt to stretch that Colorado lead. After one quarter here in Manhattan, Colorado 14, Kansas State nothing. Ron Zapolo and Dave Logan back in Manhattan, where Colorado now looking to stretch their lead. Ken Culbertson, who has been terrific, will attempt the field goal. Campbell will hold. They'll spot it at the 11, a kick of 21 yards. And it is good. Culbertson, a 21-yard field goal, making him 13 of 16 on the season. Yeah, the kicking game really has been quite a weapon for Colorado this year. He hasn't missed an extra point. Talking about Kenny Culbertson, Tom Ruin, the punter, leads the nation in that category. Jeff Campbell is the top punt return man in the Big 8. I believe he's fifth nationally. So the kicking game, just an important aspect of a very successful year in Boulder. Don't forget, uh, the next in our never-ending string of CU specials will be next Friday at 9 o'clock. One heartbeat is... Uh, Dave and myself and a cast of thousands, Mark McIntosh, Peter Rogan, will look back at what has been a very special season for the CU Buffs and still with a game to play. That's one heartbeat next Friday night at 9 o'clock on Channel 4. I guess Kansas State can uh, come away from that drive and feel fairly satisfied. Stop CU kept him out of the end zone, something that again and pointed out statistically the ability of the Colorado team to score once they get inside the 20. That's only the eighth time this year that they've been inside the opponent's 20 and failed to score a touchdown. Dimitri Scott, number 20. David Bowman, number 41. Deep for the Wildcats. Colorado now will have the wind at their back. Culbertson, you can tell the difference with the win. This one to the goal line. Scott with room down the sideline. He's out to the 34-yard line. So Kansas State again will have pretty good field position as they start their fourth drive of the afternoon. Update you on a couple of scores. Michigan has uh, tied that game with Minnesota. It's 7-7 the second. Michigan State and Northwestern tied at seven in the first. Duke leads North Carolina, 24-0 second. North Carolina State leads Virginia Tech, 10-0 first quarter. Iowa leads Purdue, 7-0 second quarter. Mississippi leads Tennessee, 7-0 first quarter. That certainly would be an upset. Tennessee's had a great season. Watson, quick little pitch over to Pat Jackson. Jackson goes outside. And he's out to the 38 where Bruce Young makes the stop. Michael Smith in motion, the leading receiver, and then he is utilized as a blocker for Jackson after he catches the ball. There goes Smith in motion. 
the quick throw just to get the football in the hands of your best people. You see Smith try to block McLuhan, and a pretty good job by Dave McLuhan, spinning off the block and getting a hand in on the tackle with Bruce Young. Pickup of four, it'll be second and six. Michael Smith has not yet had a completion. Play action, Watson, incomplete. He was looking for Al Jones, the tight end. It'll be third and six. Smith with 64 catches, averaging 12 yards a catch. He's got a couple of touchdowns. He needs, I believe, they with six more catches to break the Kansas State all-time single-season reception record held by Greg Washington, who uh, didn't make the team uh, this year, flunked out of school. It's tough to throw a play-action pass when, as a team, you're averaging less than two yards per carry. Your opposition just doesn't play the running game with a great deal of intensity. That makes what Smith has done even more important. Quick drop, and the pass well over the head of Jackson and Kansas State will have to punt. They have been three and out their last three series. And there were some that uh, thought maybe Carl Straub might share some playing time with Paul Watson, the starter. Straub may be the better thrower. Watson probably the better athlete. And of course, that's a throw that uh, you just have to make. Cobb's had a couple of good punts. Campbell is back at his 25. This one in the wind. Campbell makes the fair catch at the CU 27. 14-22 to go in this first half. Colorado out in front, 17 to nothing. There's a look at Kansas State Stadium in Manhattan. On a sunny, bright afternoon, Colorado up by 17, and they have it on their 27. Hagan keeps it. Now the pitch to Flanagan. A.J. out to the 36, where Tyrese Hurds, with help from Eric Harper, made the stop. It's a pickup of nine. It'll be second and one. Well, Darian Hagan, again, making the right decision. Stretches the defense as long as he can. Right before he gets hit, just flips it out. and Pretty easy play for J.J. Flanagan. You just make sure you keep that relationship proper between yourself and the quarterback so that every time the quarterback makes that flip, you're right in position to catch the ball and then just run. Hemingway in at fullback. Pritchard in motion. And there's Flanagan. Big hole. Flanagan bounces off one tackle. Maurice Henry finally flings J.J. to the turf, but he's out to the 47. And that's another Colorado first down. For Kansas State, not a lot there to get excited about after one quarter. I think that may be the understatement of the year. I was trying to be kind. But you, you are kind. Seven total yards. This is a team that, that averages less than 300 yards per game. It's a struggle. I remember the days when the Buffs were in that area, and they blasted their way out. Maybe someday Bill Snyder and Kansas State will, too. Although you are right, they have a long way to go. Hagan with the wind. Fires. Complete. He's got Campbell down at the 30. Pick up of 22 and a first down. Jeff Campbell actually gets into this break before Darian Hagan delivers the football, but the velocity of the throw makes up the difference. The Campbell has to wait for it a little bit. The simple coverage where the cornerback will come up, he'll try to chuck the receiver. Campbell does a nice job of avoiding contact, getting in, pressuring that safety before taking it back to the corner, and he was there a little bit early before Hagan was ready to throw, but that thing had some steam on it. From the 30, Hagan keeps it with room inside the 20, inside the 10. Touchdown! Gorgeous run by Darian Hagan. Well, they call him Mr. Magic, and he certainly weaved some magic on this play. Reverse spin, Hagan cutting back against the grain, gets inside, and I think weaving would be an appropriate description of that run. 30-yard touchdown run is 16th of the year, and his second of the game. That was pretty. He can do that. He's a dangerous guy with the ball. Culbertson. 
He gets good by number 28. Culbert puts it through. 13 17 to go in the half. If you're here with Colorado, you're going to get a chance to play. The Buffs way out in front. Let's go to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh. Thanks, guys. You were talking about Hagan before the touchdown run, that pass where he had a lot of steam on the ball. I was talking to him on the sideline. He said his shoulder is still sore from the hit he took at Oklahoma State last week, but you couldn't tell it from the pass he threw there. He's a very gritty kid, tough, maybe the toughest kid on the team, and he's doing a wonderful job directing the buff attack. Back up. You know, mentioning the uh, throw when he got hurt actually at Oklahoma State, Bill McCartney felt at that time he might have to take him out of the game. Could hardly lift his shoulder. Uh, high enough to get a pass off, and that was the second play of the game against the Cowboys. So, Darian Hagan certainly, as Mark McIntosh aptly described, a, a tough, hard-nosed player. Scott and Bowman were deep. Colbertson drove it about seven yards deep, and Scott downed it. Kansas State will start on the end zone their 20. 20. They have yet to get a first down. They are down by 24. And here's another look at the man we've been talking about. Well, Hagan again, once he breaks that initial line and a good block by George Hemingway and Joe Garden, cuts back inside and his legs are going a million miles an hour in different directions. I don't know how you ever figure out as to which way he's going. He's got great speed, under 4-5 in the 40. and it's going to be an interesting game on January 1st. Well, we'll talk about that as the afternoon progresses. First and 10. Watson over the middle. And it's dropped by Eric Gallant, the fullback, sophomore out of Lakeland, Florida. Second and ten. See now Kansas State looking for their initial first down. They've just got to try to go back and, and do what they think they do best. Be very basic, short passes, get the ball to your best receiver, and just attempt to get on track a bit. Down 24 to nothing, you lose every bit of confidence that you had, and they certainly couldn't have had uh, a great deal of that coming into today's contest. I think their motto here is wait until the basketball season. Boy, Lonnie Kruger's done a terrific job with this program. Of course, he inherited uh, a good program, a program rich with tradition. Play action. Quick pass. Nearly picked off by Chad Brown. He was looking for Al Jones. Brown had a hand on it. Jones had a hand on it. And it falls to the ground. Speaking of basketball, Tom Miller finished strong last year. And there's a lot of excitement around uh, his program this year. And he feels the success of the football team will will carry over. Yeah, I think it's going to help him. And, and Tom really has done a good job recruiting. He's got some better athletes in fold. And, of course, the Sean Vanderbur back, who was a good player as a sophomore last year. He's got a chance to have a, a much improved team. Third and ten. Chad Brown, of course, who made the play. He'll be our feature at halftime. If you saw a piece this week, Chad uh, has a couple of snakes for pets. Dave Logan's type guy. There's Watson, and he is sacked. Back at the nine, Canavis McGee and Arthur Walker combined to do Watson in. McGee, the Big 8 Defensive Player of the Week off his fine performance of a week ago. Well, unlike the last sack, which we said it was a coverage sack, this time you can see Watson never has a chance to brace himself on that right foot. Walker's all over him as is McGee, and Canavis McGee, Bill McCartney said, is playing much, much better the last three or four weeks, coming back from that broken ankle he sustained last year against Nebraska. The dominant player last year, and he's looking to return to that form late in this year. Here's the punt by Cobb into the wind. Campbell calls for and makes the fair catch at the Kansas State 38. And as we talked about at halftime, Chad Brown will be one of the features, along with a profile on Joe Roaming. We'll have all the highlights and stats. One of the pieces we'll have on that special, a, this coming Friday night, will be a piece on the uh, the H-Boys, Alfred Williams and Canavis McGee. You know, Chad Brown actually puts those snakes around his neck. That's what it, That's what the story said, yes. Got to be out of his mind. Your type of guy, I know. You get used to that. I mean, I don't mind having them, but they're not going around my neck. Hagan on first down. Throws for Parrick. The big tight end rambles down to the 22. Another first down, a 16-yard pickup. Good get a holding call. It's going to go against CU, but keep in mind, we mentioned Hagan's shoulder. I can tell you, it must feel okay because he put some mustard on that ball. John Parrick, who has turned into a pretty good receiver, not utilized much the last couple of years. Big, strong, 
blocking type tight end, but you, you need to have your tight end involved in the passing game as an option too. Yeah, you can tell that the wind must be a factor. They really didn't throw it all in the first quarter, and now with the wind, you can really see the difference. I believe, uh, I believe Mark Vanderpool, you can see, is just about to undress one of the Kansas State players. Of course, Vanderpool, another guy that's had a very good year, 6'7 and 300 pounds. He'll be back next year, and NFL scouts are already drooling. With good reason. Mark's done a great job. First and 20, Flanagan. Not much. To about the 45, where he's wrapped up by Chris Patterson, one of their leading tacklers, a freshman out of Miami. Part of Kansas State's problem, Dave, is the size. Their two uh, starting linebackers, Patterson and Barta, are 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. and you, you, you just can't line up against some of the top teams in the country with with two inside linebackers that are that size. You can have all the heart in the world and grit and toughness and even good football instincts, but when you're giving away 50 and 60 pounds in the interior of part of your defense, you're not going to win many games. Second and 17 for the Buffs. They have it. Kansas State 45. Hagan keeps it and is nailed. Maurice Henry. Been a solid year. Made the stop on Hagan at the 44. Hagan just a yard. It's third and 16. Kansas State gambling. You'll see Henry from the right side of your screen come down on the blitz and nobody blocks it. The option play took a little bit more time developing and the senior was there to make the play. And a Kansas State man getting up very slowly. It's James Enan Okit, number 36. He's being helped off. Senior inside linebacker. Eleven minutes to go in this first half. Good look at Bill Snyder. I don't know even Snyder knew what he was getting the, into. The problems were here in Manhattan with respect to this football program. He knew certainly they were down, but he commented this week he had no idea as to what he was getting himself involved with. Third and 17, Hagen throwing long down the sidelines. Incomplete, he was looking for Nelson. But a fine play on the sidelines by Marcus Miller to break it up at the last second, and Colorado will have to punt. Hagan actually makes a pretty good throw, but this, again, is a play that because he was forced outside, that receiver is already to the flag, and he's simply sitting there waiting, and, of course, the safety is going to be able to break on the football. When you run that conversion, they call it a bench pattern, where the receiver, when he sees a certain coverage, takes it off. You've got to make sure that ball is delivered on time and Hagan was flushed out of the pocket. I thought it would be a punt, but Culbertson's on for what is a 61-yard attempt. And it is short, but short by only about six or seven yards. So Culbertson went for the 61-yard field goal. The Buffs way up, figuring no problem giving them the ball almost at midfield. They wanted to give Culbertson a shot at a long way. Well, a shot is setting the school record, too. Sure. And you're playing a team that defensively you're going to dominate most of the game, so why not? And you never know. you got one more game to play in the postseason. Maybe you'll need a, a long field goal and want to give Culbertson a shot at it. You see Bill McCartney talking to Mark Vanderpool, I would think, about the holding call, where to put his hands and how to handle that particular style rush. So, Kansas State at the 47, Carl Straw. In the game at quarterback. Better thrower. Straw, scrambling, hit by McGee as he went to throw it. Now call it an incomplete pass. But he's not a better runner. <laughs> no. And I'm not sure that that, I'm not sure him being a better thrower today against this defense is going to mean much. Carl Straw has been in and out of quarterback, of course, with Paul Watson. They've even utilized Chris Cobb at times. They've had no stability, really at the trigger man position, and that's one of the reasons that they have been unsuccessful in scoring a lot of points. Straw was injured a couple weeks ago, and Watson got the start against Iowa State, played that game and the Oklahoma game. And here's Straw with ten and a half minutes to go in the first half back in. Did you see his stats on the year over a thousand yards? He's throwing into the wind, and it is a factor. Here comes McGee, and Straw just threw that one away. 
flag could easily go down there. I, I think that probably should be a flag because I'm, I'm looking at some of the people that were in the area of the pass, and Carl Straw has heard, I think, there is nobody for Carl Straw to throw the football to as McGee blows right by the offensive tackle. And, I mean, there's absolutely no one there. Will McCain had no chance to block McGee. Apparently setting up a, some sort of screen pass as Straw's Stroll. help to the uh, sideline. Straw, I'm just going to guess, but it looks like a shoulder the way he's coming off. That's too bad. So Watson will come back in. and Dave, you made the point. He does not run as well as Watson in the face of this rush. It would be difficult for Straw to avoid the rush. Of course, and he didn't run backwards very well either. That's what he had to do there as McGee was just turned loose. If you're going to set up a screen offensively, you got to make sure that you, you stop that initial initial surge of the defensive lineman and McGee never got touched. Don't forget the Bill McCartney show. Sunday nights at 1035, one of my favorites. The post is a little shaky, but the show is sensational. <laughs> Third and ten. Watson back in over the middle to a wide open Eric Allen into Colorado territory at the 47. He'll be about a yard short. We'll see what Kansas State does on fourth down. Can't be any decision here. You've got to go for it. Looking for your initial first down. Good uh, protection up front. Watson stands in the pocket. These are the kinds of throws that we were talking about. Easy throws. Get them to somebody. Take some pressure off your quarterback and, and hopefully pick up a first down here and there. You've done a great job on that show. I know what hosting football shows are like. and uh, you, you make do one, too. Yeah, you've made it entertaining. It's been fun. I've enjoyed all the interviews. I've enjoyed Bill. and It's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it as a viewer. Appreciate it. You bet. They're about a foot That's short. Forward, about a foot. Well, you can't run. What do you do, Dave? Do you throw it anyway, even though you're a foot short? Or do you just try well, and sneak it over there? I, th I think you, you may have to try to <laughs> try to sneak it again. And, of course, we mentioned earlier they've averaged less than two yards per carry. I guess the good news, they don't need two yards. They need a foot. Maybe you just sneak your quarterback. Well, gets along with it. It's fourth and a foot. Gallon in motion. It's a pitch to oh, Jackson. And, uh, you, you don't want to be critical, but that one had no shot. Three, David Gibbs... Made the play on Jackson, a loss of three, and Colorado will take over. Well, two things here. You're running into the short side of the field on a toss, which is going to be very tough unless you dominate people in the line of scrimmage, and Kansas State obviously doesn't. The second thing, you're running to Canavis McGee, which is his strong suit, playing against the rush. You, you have to think your quarterback can pick up a foot with that kind of defense because they didn't cover the center. There was nobody over the offensive center on that play. From the 49, Colorado. And Flanagan is thrown for a loss. Maurice Henry and John Crawford combined to make the stop on Flanagan as he loses a couple. That's the point, Dave. You're a foot away, and quarterback could fall forward, you would think, and get the first down. Yeah, good penetration there by Kansas State as Flanagan has nowhere to go. So a loss of two, nine and a half minutes and counting to go in this first half. Crawford... One of the better defensive players on this Kansas State team. Hagan. The pitch to Flanagan. Nice pitch. J.J. with room. Down to the 35 where Tyrese Hurds run him out, runs him out. That's a 17-yard gain and a first down for Colorado. Well, Flanagan had to be licking his chops today before the game. Blaze Bryant of Iowa State had 143 yards in the first half. And Flanagan certainly... A great back in his own right. There's nobody out there. Just turn on the Jets. You can see MJ Nelson trying to block Tyrese Hurds. And it's got to be a nightmare for a cornerback here in Kansas State. Down, You're trying to pile up blocks every play. And, I mean, you've got running backs coming at you with nobody even slowing them down. First and 10 from the 35. Hagan, the pitch to Campbell. Jeff around the end gets one good block inside the 30, down the sidelines. Touchdown. It's coming back, I think. There's a flag down Flagged on the at the 26. Now, Mark Vanderpool did a terrific job of positioning himself so that he wouldn't clip, and I don't think this is called on him, but the, the, the penalty came after Campbell had cleared. I hope we can see on the right side of the screen, watch for number 72 as Campbell will come to him. Vanderpool will appear. Now, watch him. He's trying to get in position there. That is not a clip. That, that is, is a clip, though. And it's tough to see as to who committed the foul, but... 
Jeff Campbell will not find himself in the end zone on that play. So they'll bring it back all the way out to the 41. It's tough for a wide receiver. You don't get many chances to get in that end zone, and when you do, 15, yard line. disheartening to have it call back. Although Campbell, the, the consummate team guy. Let's take a look and see if we can see it. That is the clip there, no doubt about it. And it looked like Darren Muhlenberg, number 63, trying to do the best job he could to get downfield, but clearly in the middle of the bat. Hagan makes it back to about ball the original line three, of scrimmage. Hagen. Ball is at the 36. Maurice Henry made the tackle. You know, Darian Hagan said this week that he was going to ask to be moved to running back or wing back, which may come as a great surprise to Bill McCartney. If things had not developed as they did at the quarterback position, Hagan wanted to play. He said, hey, the coaches may have said, no, they may have left me there, but I wanted to play this year, and I would have played wing back or running back. You know, Heisman candidate now for saying right. that in retrospect. And he, he could have done it. I mean, he's got the ability. I don't know if you saw that stat, the total yards, 294 for Colorado, two for Kansas State. Hagan is sacked. A flag is down. So is Hagan at the 43. Maurice Henry has been very active. Made the sack on Hagan. Flag is at the line of scrimmage. I think Kansas State may have jumped off sides, and that's why you saw Bill Coleman beat initially on the move up the field. I tell you, I like him at quarterback myself. Yeah, I think he's uh, stuck at that position for the rest of his collegiate career. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much, Ron. Number 52 for the Buffs, starting center Jay Lewenberg, a sophomore out of St. Louis, is out there on the field right now with the Buffs offense. But when the Buffs offense is on the bench, he has got a coat on. He had the flu all night. He was up all night. But I asked him why he's staying in the ball game. He said he wants to stay in there and help Darian Hagan get his thousand and thousand. Everybody is really behind the Buffs sophomore quarterback in his hopes of getting that big mark. Back upstairs. Second down and five. Flanagan. Close to a first down is he is hit and brought down by Matt Hennessy. You know, offensive linemen take a, a great deal of pride, too, in, in backs going over certain goals. Flanagan, as we've said, he's already over 1,000 yards. Darian Hagan is well on his way, and, and the offensive line should get a lot, a lot of credit for that, and they do feel like uh, they're, they're the guys that have made that possible, at least a good portion of it. I mean, they don't get to carry the ball. What else can they, uh, how, how else can they contribute? Third and one for Colorado. Look what Flanagan has done in a quarter and a half. Hagan still has it. Got a first down at the 22. Like Eric Harper three, Hagen. wrapped him up. By number six, Eric Harper. Hagan has enough for that first down. Of course, I'm sure when you played at Colorado, I mean, you took great pride in the accomplishments of your teammates. We had some good backs. Yeah, you did. First did you block that for them? I'm sure. Yards. I was uh, a very average blocker, to tell you the truth. Tell you one of if the you don't believe me, just ask the guys I blocked I was going to say, one of the honest assessments this year by Dave Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Darian Hagan, 99 yards on the ground. Needs 58 more yards for 1,000. There's a late pitch. That is knocked out of bounds. Darian was pretty much wrapped up by Elijah Alexander, number 89, tried to get it to Flanagan. That may be one of the few ill-advised pitches that Hagan has made this year. Well, again, the relationship between the quarterback and the running back, as you see him conferring, never changes. Flanagan and Hagan. Flanagan will try to stay right even with Hagan, no matter if he dips inside. Now, Hagan pitches just a little bit late and actually a little bit low, too. You know, Colorado, speaking of fumbles, they have lost six fumbles this year, which is going to break a team record should they be under 10. Every year since 1962, the Buffaloes have lost at least 10 in a season. Six this year. Here's Pritchard with a ball. A rare attempt for Mike. Running hard inside the 15, down to the 14. He got eight. Or it'll be third and two. Colorado has done a great job on the giveaway takeaway. They're plus nine, which has been a big part of their success. We mentioned Mike Pritchard uh, does so many things, and kind of nice to see him get a chance to carry the ball every now and then. Ducks behind those big linemen. You see Coleman up front, Perrick, Muhlenberg doing a good 32, job of sustaining the blocks, and really moving the line of scrimmage forward. And 
the junior from Las Vegas doing the rest. Nice guy. Very personable, articulate. Third and two for the Buffs. Flanagan's got the first down as he's inside the 10 to the 9. Running behind Coleman and Garden. And Colorado has a first and goal with 5.50 to go in the first half. They're out in front 24 0. Well, McCartney chomping on that gum like they were down 24 0. Hey, Mississippi and Tennessee, Dave, 14 14, second quarter. Texas leads TCU 7 0, second quarter. Ohio State leads Wisconsin 7 3, first quarter. Duke leads North Carolina 27 0, third quarter. Auburn leads Georgia 17 0 at the half. Hmm, and that, although not an upset, certainly is a surprise. And they are dominating the Bulldogs. Hagan keeps it, cuts it up. Fine open field tackle by okay, Marcus Miller three, Hagen. at the five. On the stop, number six, Derek Harper. The crowd looks cold and sparse. Sides are about two-thirds full. The end zone is empty. Hagan tackled back at the 10. Chris Patterson grabbed Darian, but barely after he moved away from center. Greg An exuberant freshman. You'll see him come through untouched as they gamble a bit. And Patterson has Hagen before he can make any choice, any move to the outside. Goal see the you and he settled for a field goal in a similar situation when uh, Hagen was thrown for a loss. And now they're in a third and goal back at the nine. 4.15 and counting to go in the first half. Well, they break the bone and certainly in a passing situation you want to get Hagen outside if you can and let him create some things and buy some time. Nelson, the wide receiver, Hagen keeps it inside the five and run down by Eric Harper okay, at the three, three where it's fourth and Not goal. Six, Although Harper. Darian's had a terrific year, he doesn't have eyes in the back of his helmet, and I think Hagen felt like with that fake of the ball to freeze the cover guy, he would score. But the backside penetration, the chase guys, the guys coming from the weak side were able to run Hagen down. Fourth and goal, Jeff Campbell and Charles Johnson check into the game. Johnson is at quarterback. Hagan may have been the shake it up. Flanagan, touchdown. On fourth and goal, J.J. Flanagan takes it in. Darren Higgins over on the sideline on both knees and being talked to. Just a power game with George Hemingway, the big pullback, leading J.J. Flanagan into the end zone. I'm not sure if Hagan is hurt or not. Looks to be shaken up a bit, still on both knees. The good sign is there are no doctors around. Just teammates is Culbertson. Extra point is good by number 28. Knocks it through. Well, we'll come back and check on the status of Darian Hagan. Colorado 31, Kansas State nothing. Wildcats have gambled the last couple of times. This is the play that Darian Hagan's shaken up on, and Eric Harper comes again from the weak side, number six. Now, Hagan, looking in front of him, sees the pitch man, tries to freeze him with the ball, and Harper on Hagan's back. I don't know if he rolled up on his legs or maybe drove Hagan's helmet into the ground. Apparently, Hagan is okay. And uh, you would think we'll be back, but it cost him a play. He's sitting down there right now. As he was sitting with Bill McCartney. McCartney just got up. And seems assured that Hagen is okay. Looks to be okay. Culbertson will kick off. Bowman and Scott are deep. This one will be down by Scott. Kansas State will take it on their 20. First of 10, Kansas State on the 20 yard line. Chris Darian Hagen with J.J. Flanagan and Jeff Campbell. Looks to be okay. Yeah, when it's 31 nothing, it's easy to feel okay. I'll tell you what, as tough as he is, when you're an option quarterback in college football, you are going to get banged up and bruised and knocked down and you're going to be sore. 12 plays, 51 yards. 
the Buffs' latest drive. I hear people all the time say, why don't they run the option in the pros? That's a good way to get your quarterback killed. Yep, unless you've got about four or five on the team. Yeah. Because those defensive ends in the pros will not allow you to do it. Watson on first and ten into the win. It's batted around and intercepted by Bruce Young at the 33. About three different people touched this one, Dave. Hey, pretty good protection again, and, and, and a ball that looked to, with Michael Smith a little behind him. Chad Brown gets a hand on it, knocks it up into the air, and Bruce Young, before being dumped on his back, able to hang on to the football. Throwing behind a receiver certainly is dangerous. Michael Smith not able to move his body back and come up with a catch. That's one that he, I mean, you have to make. And Smith, uh, a very good receiver, an all-big A candidate. Even though it's a tough catch, you gotta, you got to make things like that happen. Buffs with a couple of changes. Number 81, John Bowman is in at tight end. Hagan back at quarterback. A hand off to Flanagan. Not much to about the 31. Number two, Flanagan. Matt Hennessy made the first hit on Flanagan. Let's down to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks, Ron. That interception by Buff Free Safety Bruce Young, it knocked him silly. He was running off the field, and all of his teammates and defensive coordinator Mike Hankowitz were going, hey, do you know what you just did? He goes, uh, uh, I think I just intercepted the ball. He was a little starry-eyed after that interception. Back up set. Hagan keeps it. Plenty of room inside the 20. Down the sidelines and down to the 8-yard line. Where it will be Both first and goal three. for Colorado. Darian Hagan gobbling up big chunks of yardage. And finding out how hard that surface is that he's playing on. Gets his elbow scraped up. Not much to say is Hagan again. You've seen it all year. Strong enough to pull away from arm tackles. Just picking up chunks of yards. Dimitri Scott made the tackle. Hagen needs 30 more yards for 1,000. We've still got 2.15 to go in the first half. First and goal. The ball is just inside the nine. And Kissick takes it to about the seven. Ball carrier number 33. Patterson, last man up, making the tackle. Eric got a couple second and goal. Here's a guy that's seen the good and bad. Eric Kissick, a fifth year senior. Came here when things were certainly not so rosy. Carried the football a lot. Was hurt, lost his starting job, bounced back. Now, probably the best blocking back that the University of Colorado has. Ran into his mother. We did that in Stillwater. She uh, goes to every game. Hagan on the option. Not a lot of room, and Darian's run out for a loss. Back at the nine, Elijah Alexander snuffed it out nicely. 215-pound sophomore. It'll be third and goal, just inside the 10. Kansas State did a nice job that time of stringing out the option, and, and Darian could never get to that seam. He kept trying and running to the boundary and figured out uh, sooner than later that he was going to run out of territory. Actually ducked behind Flanagan. Good job by the Wildcat defense. Michael Simmons, number 42, is in at a wide receiver. Third and goal. Hagan keeps it. Runs hard and gets down to the three. You don't figure they'll go for it, do you? Oh, they just might. <laughs> Four down territory, I believe. Sean Dabney, number 78, made the stop. Last touchdown came on a fourth and goal from the three. Johnson handed off to Flanagan. Time out on the field. Gives Colorado a chance to decide which fourth down play they'd like to attempt. Number 59, Jody Killian being helped off. Freshman.
Buffs will return home tonight on America West Charter. The lands in Stapleton at 6.50. Your lights are on. Fourth and goal. The ball is on the three. Hagan the fake, keeps it, and down it goes at the two. Marcus Miller, the free safety. Made a fine move, and Hagan is stopped. Number 34, Chris Patterson is down. He may be shaken up. Well, Marcus Miller, the free safety, is sitting right in the gap waiting for Darian Hagan. There he is, Perry and Vanderpool double team, the defender, and nobody to block Miller. Darian unable to jump inside and force the senior to miss a tackle. So the buff stopped on downs for the first time this afternoon. Kansas State with 42 seconds to go in the half. Trailing by 31, they've got it at their three. Many of the fans are heading for the concessions as we are about at halftime. Wind whipping around Kansas State Stadium. A handoff to the fullback, Gallon. He's to the five. On the carry, carry number one, Eric Gallon. Even though you're down 31-0, I'm not sure you want to take too many chances this deep in your territory with under 30 seconds to go. You haven't been able to protect the quarterback too much. You certainly haven't been successful moving the ball. And uh, maybe just go in the locker room and lick your wounds and try to do the best you can in the second half. Kansas State, time with for one more play, 13 seconds and counting. And the handoff to Jackson. He's out to the eight, and that'll do it for the first half. Ball carrier number three, Patrick Jackson. Half. So it's been all Colorado day, but through the first half as they are out in front, 31 to nothing. Flanagan and Hagen have each scored twice. Culbertson has a field goal, and it's 31 nothing. And let's go down to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh and Bill McCartney. Mark? Thank you very much. With Coach Bill McCartney, you knew the offense would be able to move the ball, but your defense has played excellent. It's been suffocating. Yeah, I don't think they've got a first down, and uh, so it's it's going just like we hoped. We haven't got anybody hurt. Uh, now we got to decide how we're going to substitute in the second half, whether we're going to let Hagan go for a record or whatever, and uh, those are good problems to have. He's 30 yards away. Rushing? He's only 30 yards away? You're going to leave him in? He'll probably get another chance at that. Okay. Good luck, Coach. Coach Bill McCartney, his team very comfortably in front here at halftime, 31 to nothing. Back upstairs are on a day. Thanks very much, Mark. So we can look forward at least to seeing a little bit more of Darian Hagan in the second half. We are at the half, Colorado comfortably out in front. Ron Zapolo along with Dave Logan here in Manhattan, Kansas, where Colorado out in front, 31 to nothing. It has been a half of total domination by the Buffs. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. Flanagan on the first play of the game took it 58 yards and here's the second play. Behind good blocking Bill Coleman and John Perry sealing the inside Flanagan able to sneak into the end zone. Seven nothing CU. Hagan and Flanagan both well over 100 yards and now it was Hagan's turn. Darian again making a, a good choice not cutting it up too soon that ball in front he could still pitch nice little quick fake down to the one yard line. And Hagen then, next play, went over. The fake to Kissick, ducks up inside, breaks the tackle enough to score. Well, it's just like clockwork, just like the buffs. That made it 14-0, and Mike Pritchard got in the act. This was the first completion of the day for Darian Hagen, and Pritchard doing a nice job of adjusting to the ball. Set up a field goal to make it 17 to nothing. Here it is by Ken Culbertson. Kenny Culbertson missed a 61-yard attempt to break the string, but that was his eighth consecutive kick. Then it was back to the Heisman Trophy candidate. Doing a good job ducking up inside and uh, just making people miss. Actually, nobody even getting close enough to him to put a hand on it. Ah, I think it was the best run of the game. That made it 24-0. Then on fourth and goal from the three, Johnson hands off to Flanagan. Hagan shaking up the previous play. Flanagan behind some good blocking. George Hemingway, the fullback, leading him into the end zone. Defensively, the Buffs are pitching a shutout in every category and got a pick here Second pick of the game. 
Ball a little bit behind Michael Smith. Chad Brown doing a good job of keeping it in the air, and uh, Bruce Young with the interception. Adkins had a pick earlier, and they've had a couple of sacks, and the real story may be the stats. You talk about pitching a shutout. Not only has Kansas State not scored, they do not have a first down. They are minus yards rushing and eight yards of total offense against 369 and of course everyone knew Colorado had the superior team time of possession 22 plus for CU not even eight for Kansas State and uh, Wildcats now simply have to try to string together a few first downs and and uh, do the best they can but they are to say the least up against it well we'll return to Manhattan with more halftime activities after this from the University of Colorado back in Manhattan 31-0 Colorado as both teams are now back on the field ready for the second half a half where many of the buffs can achieve some personal stats one of them being Darian Hagan you heard Bill McCartney telling Bill Ma uh, Mark McIntosh that he will leave Hagan in there to become that thousand thousand man thousand on the ground thousand through the air and then probably go to Charles Johnson elsewhere I would think they they'd make plenty of substitutions if you think about it Darian Hagan really deserves a chance to accomplish that uh, that feat only four of the quarterbacks have done it in NCAA history Hagan has not played more than about seven games of total football he's been out at halftime in the Kansas game and the Iowa State game and the Missouri game. He came out before halftime. Uh, didn't play the entire game against Washington. Sat after the third quarter. And I think if you total up the, the number of quarters that he has set, Darian has played a total of about seven and a half games. And he's accomplished big numbers in those games. That's a good point. Colorado will kick off. Dimitri Scott and David Bowman are deep for the Wildcats. Clear, sunny day. Cold and windy here in Manhattan as Culbertson starts the second half. And Bowman will down it. Kansas State will start on their 20. Watson again will be at quarterback. Eric Gallon number one, Pat Jackson number three. The backs behind Watson. Smith 88, Hernandez 83, the wide receivers. Alan Friedrich, number 84, is the tight end. And you can see it has been a struggle for Watson and for Carl Straw, who had two plays and left injured. And Watson's numbers, they extended the entire Kansas State offensive production so far. Colorado pointing at the interior offensive line of the Wildcats, saying somebody moved. Left guard jumped, I believe. So you always are able to spot that because from your career you were so concerned yourself about jumping off sides or having one of your teammates do it that <laughs> you're saying I'm an expert uh, offside jumper. I just think you have the eyes for that. I mean, you spot those things right away because you know and you've told me that the worst thing you can do out there is jump off sides, well, especially for a wide receiver. An offensive lineman flinches occasionally because the the defense right in front of him is constantly moving. First and ten. Watson throws it to Gallon. It is tied by Terry Johnson at the 20. No game. Fortunately, Gallon gets up and he appears to be okay. And I think Paul Watson is hurt as well because he really takes a shot after he delivers the football. This is is truly getting neck collar. Watson gets pinched. Now watch Terry Johnson as he comes up with the left arm. That's legal because he is well below, actually gets the head, and luckily doesn't injure anybody. The old clothesline trick. Second and ten. Watson again. He knows the pressure is coming. Dumps it out to Friedrich. The tight end. He's got a first down and more. Out to the 40 where James and Young make the tackle, but the biggest offensive play of the day for the Wildcats some 20 yards and their first first down. I tell you I'm kind of glad because I didn't want the dubious distinction of being one of the first guys to ever do a game in which the team didn't have a first down. <laughs> nice run after he catches the football and Alan Friedrich able to break a couple of tackles and uh, the big senior tied in 
gets that first first down. He's got to make the Wildcats feel better. Wildcats on the move. At the 40. Hey, when you're down 31-0, you... Hey, they moved 20 yards. That's right. Look for success in increments. Here's the handoff to Gallon. He's got room. Makes a cut. He's out to the 49. Joel Steed made the stop. Pick up a nine. It'll be second and one. <laughs> Haven't called Joel's name that much today. He's had a great year. The sophomore from Aurora Hinckley. Well, speaking of sophomores, Eric Gallon with a nice little run here. Counter, counter try, excuse me. They pull a guard and actually get Gallon outside. Good job of sustaining the block as Gallon ducks up inside and Scott Hanna unable to get off that block and make the tackle. Two first downs. With actually, no, a little bit short of the first down. Second one, but we have seen your points well taken. The two biggest offensive plays of the game. Penn State out in front of Notre Dame in the first quarter. Watson, here comes the rush. And he's got Gallon. Another first down. Down to the Colorado 36. Eric Hamilton made the stop. 15-yard pickup and a first down. And this is against the, basically, Dave, CU's number one defense with a couple of second-teamers in there. Good job by Watson. Good presence as he hangs in there, gets rid of the football just about as he's going to the turf. And here's Gallon again. See you playing a lot of zone coverages. They're dropping very deep, and you're going to be able to get some of those receivers underneath on crossing routes wide open. Gallon had 23 catches in nine games coming in. First and 10 from the buff 36. Kansas State has taken the kickoff and moved it down the field. The draw to Gallon. He's got room across the 30, down to the 26 with Tim James. Makes the tackle, he'll be close to another Kansas State first down. So if they're not having any first downs in 30 minutes, and they do have a first down, they've got three quick ones here to start the third quarter. Well, there's a situation where a draw is a good call because you've got those guys up front really coming after your quarterback, and Gallon snuck through virtually un untouched until he got into the secondary. Gallon getting all the work here in this drive. He'd had 23 catches coming in. He rushed 33 times for an average of 3.3 coming in as Watson improves his statistical outlook. Gallon bouncing off tacklers and gets down to the 23 where Michael Jones, CU's leading tackler, makes the stop. You notice both of the tight tight ends standing up in a two-point stance. If it looks familiar, it is. The Iowa Hawkeye offense, Bill Snyder, as we mentioned, the offensive coordinator in Iowa City the last 10 years. And I don't know if there's any other team in the country that, that has those tight ends standing in a two-point stance. Hayden Fry, of course, the architect of that offense, along with Bill Snyder, and he's tried to incorporate at least some of the good ideas here in Manhattan. 11-20 to go in the third quarter. 31-0 Colorado. Second and seven for the Wildcats. Over the middle, incomplete. There was a mix-up between Watson and Michael Smith. Smith cut it to the corner. Watson threw a post. I'll tell you, judging from the reaction of the Kansas State coaching staff, Paul Watson made the incorrect throw. Michael Smith on an option pattern had the safety frozen in the middle and was going to be wide open to the flag move, and Watson anticipated that post move and got rid of the football. Lousy feeling when you're a receiver and you know you're open and the ball's going in the other direction. Yeah, especially if you've made the wrong choice on cuts, which I don't think in that case Michael Smith did. Third and six. Watson. Here comes the rush. And Watson caught by Canavis McGee with one hand and thrown down to 25. McGee put out one hand, grabbed Watson jersey, and made the tackle. Told you McGee's really coming on in the last three or four games and starting to return to that form that he enjoyed last year. Take a look at it from the end zone. McGee will come on the left side. Watson with decent protection. Steve Walker breaking down. Chad Brown on a blitz. And there's that big right hand. He's got Watson by the jersey and flings him to the ground. So it's fourth and nine. Kansas State will go for it. I'm not so sure Canavis McGee might not be a better defensive end in the National Football League, fan and outside linebacker, kind of a combination of two. Here comes the rush, Watson gets it away to Smith, and he has a first down. 
at the Colorado 14, his first catch of the afternoon. And his 65th of the season. We told you that uh, Smith needs six catches to break the all-time Kansas State record. Here's his first simple crossing route. Nice job by Watson getting rid of the football. Alfred Williams almost had him by the back. Hung in there, and uh, here's a guy that, that really has been most of the Wildcat offense this year. And I guess good news for those in Manhattan. He's only a sophomore. You're right. Watson made a nice play. Uh, Williams had him with a hand and couldn't bring him down. Gallon, the lone setback. He's got it. Not much room, and he's stacked up at the 13. Brown and Williams along with Oakland Salavea, make the stop. And look at this, Nebraska in the first quarter, out in front of Oklahoma, 22 to seven. I should have known it because on the bus over, Dave Logan insisting that Oklahoma had Nebraska's number. Well, all you have to do is go back and check this decade. How many times the Cornhuskers have won, I believe, twice, but they do have a superior football team this year to the Sooners who have uh, been banged up and really have had problems at quarterback. Watson. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Pat Jackson. And Watson, slow to get up. This is the same pattern that Colorado's been successful on today. The flag pattern, and Greg Thomas, the safety, just not quite able to get over in time for Jackson to take it back to the flag. A good throw by Watson. Jackson able to get one foot in the end zone. That's all you need in college football. The Wildcats have their first four of the day. So they are on the board with 9.27 to go in this third quarter. And they will go for two. Gotta like that. Well, why not? Watson did it twice last week. Got it. Got the tight end, Friedrich, for the two-point conversion. 9.21 to go in this third quarter. Kansas State is on the board. Nice corner move by Jackson. The ball delivered right on time by Watson. Close call, though. We were talking in the break, and Rhonda pointed out that does he have the ball when that right foot's still on the ground? There's the ball in his hands. The foot looks to be on the ground. A close one, but the Wildcats, again, finally break through. And it was the right one. His pitcher has got a big hole in the kickoff return, and the kicker makes the tackle in front of the Colorado bench. At the Kansas State 47, David Kruger makes the tackle on Pritchard. You know that Mike, in the film meeting, will be hearing about that, that... David Kruger, the kicker. Yeah, you never like to have kickers make no. that. Although, although Kruger doing a good job of more or less pinning Pritchard in and yeah. had nowhere to go. We're taking another look at the touchdown catch by Jackson. Watch the right foot. Is it down when he has the ball in his hands? The ball's there. The right foot looks like the toe still in the uh, purple part of the end zone. Yeah, it's a good call. Close, but a good call. Hagan going to be thrown for a loss by Hennessy back at midfield. Hey, Kansas State showing you a little something. Down 31-0. They haven't had a first down. They take it down and score on defense after the big kick return. Hennessy, the senior, makes a nice play. Kruger, by the way, who made the tackle with the kicker on the kickoff. Lonnie Kruger's brother is doing a terrific job here as the Wildcat basketball coach. That was a great player in his own right when he played. He played about in your era, didn't he? Yeah, yes, he did. Here's the pitch. Back to Flanagan. J.J. bursting through and hitting down by Patterson at the 46. Pick up a four. Third and about ten. What you have now is Kansas State playing at a little bit different pace. You've got guys flying around. They've scored. They've broken through. And I think defensively, you've got a more active Wildcat team. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh. Thank you, guys. I'm here with longtime sports information director of Fred Kasai of the University of Colorado. He is now retired, but he's not really retired. He's still working very hard. You've just recently written a book. Tell me about it. Right, Mark. It's uh, the first 100 years of CU football, and uh, we planned it last a year ago to, to 
couple in with the 100 C's. We didn't realize it was going to be this kind of a season, but it's the third book I've written, and it's by far the best, I think. It's the biggest. Uh, it's an 8 by 10 size. It had 260-some pages in it. It has 250 black and white pictures. It has 16 pages of full color, and we'll feature the Orange Bowl game and the 1989 season in the book, as well as the other 99 years. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. I've worked very hard on the book, and, and it's just great that the timing is such as coming out in this season. Stay right with us. Let's go back upstairs for the play-by-play. -play. We'll come back down here with Fred in a second. Thanks, Mark. On first and ten, Flanagan. Big hole for J.J. He will score. Flanagan. From 32 yards out after a third and ten pass to Campbell got the first down. Flanagan busting through for 32 yards. But I don't believe, Dave, he was ever touched. Well, pretty good time to come back. We picked the play that J.J. Flanagan goes right through Look at the blocking. I mean, Flanagan has to make the right choices in terms of the hole that he picks, but J.J. off to the races, and uh, if he was touched, it certainly wasn't much. J.J. moving in now on 200 yards rushing. I'll tell you, the previous play, Jeff Campbell doing a nice job of coming back to the football and actually getting position in front of the linebacker to make the catch. Good by number 28. So two Over. big plays for Colorado, and... They again extend their lead, 7.36 to go in the third quarter, 38 to 8, senior. Watch Joe Garden, the left guard, as he steps inside of that right foot, gains position, takes his man down, anyway at the lead block of the linebacker. Good job up front by the center, Jay Lewenberg, and Flanagan is, as they say, off to the races. Untouched, as they say. Never a glove laid on J.J. as he's now up to 189 yards rushing. What an afternoon for J.J. I wonder if he'll get any more uh, opportunities. Hey, when you get over that 200-yard mark is when you really get the next day that national publicity. Of course, CU will get all the pub they need uh, last week in December. Pick off by Culbertson in and out of the end zone. quickly to the Kansas State initial score. Four plays, 46 yards. Most, most important. Well, I mean, for me, it's probably about the one my senior year, which is the Blue Bonneville. Blue Bonneville playing the Gator Bowl my freshman year. Very good. Toilet Bowl, sophomore and junior. We didn't, <laughs> didn't go to one. Watson's got Smith, and yep, they'll give him forward progress out to about the 23. Chad Brown drove him back about five yards. Second catch of the afternoon for Smith. From the stop, number 34, Chad Brown. Second and seven. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh. Thanks, guys. We're back with Fred Cassati. Fred, i got to ask you a question here. 100 years of CU football, who do you think has been the best player in CU history? Well, the best player that I've seen, as far as being the, the most explosive and contributory to his team, I think is Darian Hagan right now. I've never seen an athlete that has brought so much to a team as he has. But I didn't see Byron White in 1937, and I'm sure he and Darian Hagan have to be the two outstanding ball players in history. Because they were backs and had the ball around. But Joe Rolling and people like that were also very good. Let me ask you one more question. Talking about wide receivers, where does Dave Logan rank <laughs> with the wide receivers in CU football history? Dave Logan was a very mediocre athlete. He had a great publicity man, so he got a lot of notoriety, and he grew a lot after he graduated. <laughs> you heard it down here, guys, from the man, Fred Cassati. What do you think, Logan? <laughs> Dave, Dave is speechless. Hey, uh, Fred Cassati laying the lumber to Dave Logan. 7-7, seven, seven, Notre Dame and Penn State, first quarter. Watson. Over the middle. Caught by Friedrich, the tight end. Out of the 42 on third and seven. That's enough for a first down. Fred, just kidding. I happen to know that... Dave Logan. This is a pretty good pro. Watson, I think, wanted to get out of the, out of the pocket. Felt like he couldn't move and gets it up over the linebackers. And I'll tell you this, he takes a shot after he delivers the football. This is why you don't want to be playing quarterback for a team that can't run the ball at all. Because you have to throw it, they know it, and after you get rid of it, boom. 
you get tagged and driven to the ground by Arthur Walker and Alfred Williams. Well, that hurts. That, that hurts does. up here. That does. First and ten for Kansas State. They've looked much better here in the second half. Pat Jackson. Nowhere to go. Now a little pushing and shoving after the play. Michael Jones, CU's leading tackler, and he's made the hurt. stop. He is hurt. Hey, what a year he's had. Unsung hero, averaging 10 tackles a ball game. One of the leaders of the defense along with Bruce Young. Looks like he's hurt the right shoulder. Might just be a stinger, which you get sometimes when you really crack heads and you get a, a pain that goes all the way down your shoulder to your fingers. And sometimes you even lose a, a little bit of feeling in that whim. But it's only, it, it's just a brief feeling, right? And then it comes back. Yeah, hopefully. Watson. Here comes the rush. Gary Howe may have been held as Watson chased by Williams and chased out at the 41. No game. Just when you find out how fast quarterbacks are. Yep. You don't need to time quarterbacks in the forward. You just time them when they're running away from 240-pound defensive ends. Michael Jones being administered to on the sidelines. I think you're right. They have been one of those stingers. Third and ten. The ball in the Kansas State 42. They trail 38 to 8. Smith and Hernandez wide to the right. Jackson to the left. Screen. The Gallon gets a block. And he's out to the 47 where... David Gibbs did a nice job tripping him up. It'll be fourth and five from their own 47. Crowd wants Kansas State to go for it. Last game of the year, no reason not to. I'd imagine Bill Snyder uh, will go for it. Screen is, is well set up. Doing a good job up front. Gary Howell reads it. Good job of pulling the football and the gallon trying to duck back inside. Almost keeps his footing and uh, is able to pick up the first down. And the punt team comes on. Chris Cobb will booted away. Jeff Campbell going back to his own 10-yard line. Wobbly kick and short. And it's down right at the 21 of Colorado. Colorado. 434 to go in this third quarter. 38 day, Colorado. Darian Hagen remains in the game. He needs 23 more yards to go over a thousand on the ground, and that's the reason he's in there. He keeps it. And he's out to the 27. He was close to getting 23 on that one play. There's a linebacker. Blackwell was able to haul him down by his jersey. Darian, I think, had his sights set about 40 yards down the field. Reggie Blackwell, a freshman. Colorado has some, as you see, passing now. Darian is over 1,000. Colorado has some backup offensive line people in there. Campbell's still in the game. So is Hagan, Hemingway, Simmons, and Matt Bell, the running backs behind Hagan. Hagan's got it. Keeps it. And down at the 29. Nice open field tackle by Chris Cobb. Make that Eric Harper, excuse me. Let's go down to the sidelines now to Mark McIntosh. Thanks, guys. Here's an update on Michael Jones and his right shoulder. He's got what team physician Wayne Gersoff calls a burner. He just took a hard shot on that right shoulder, similar to what Hagen took back at Oklahoma State last week. Nothing serious. It's going to be sore for a few days, and he probably will not see action the rest of the day. Thanks, Mark. It's third and two for Colorado. Hemingway up the middle, a big hole and a first down as George rumbles out to the 39. More than enough for a first down. Elijah Alexander makes the stop. A couple of scores. Southern Mississippi leads Alabama 7-0 first quarter. Brigham Young leads Utah 28 to nothing first quarter. Hagan needs 
14 more yards. Give you the scores as we go. Hagan keeps it. And hit hard. Down at the 42. Now, Bill McCartney has made a decision to try to allow Darian Hagan to pass 1,000 yards. I can tell you, Kansas State knows it, too. And you saw Hemingway sneak in the last time with the ball because everybody's running to the outside. Darian Hagan takes a pretty good hit right there as the inside linebackers are able to, to sneak up on him. That was John Crawford, number 81, one of the defensive tackles. Joseph Boone hit him first, and Crawford finished him off. <laughs> Flanagan back in the game. J.J. with a big hole. These will go all the way. 57 yards. Touchdown. And hello, 200-plus yards rushing for J.J. Flanagan. This was a point everybody aware of Hagan needed the yards, and Kansas State running like crazy to the outside. We saw Hemingway sneak through two plays prior to this one at Flanagan. I mean, you could have uh, literally run two or three guys to that hole. Tell you what, J.J. is going to turn a lot of heads tomorrow morning around the country when they pick up the paper and look at the numbers on Flanagan. That was his fourth touchdown. He's now up at around 240 yards for the afternoon. Goodness, that's a, that's a day's work no matter who you're playing or where it is. Albertson has the extra point. Don't forget the Bill McCartney Show in Miami. Saturday, December 30th at 7 o'clock. As Flanagan may be done as he puts on the baseball cap. Yeah, usually when those caps come out, that's, that's about, about it. Bill McCartney Show live from Miami. Dave Logan, of course. In the second quarter. The hosting will all be supporting Dave in that uh, Saturday, December 30th. I believe that is an hour special Bill McCartney show. Here's another angle of the man of the hour, J.J. Flanagan. And as you sit at home, think to yourself, could I have made it through this hole? J.J. Flanagan. I mean, look at that baby. Well, I could have made it through the hole, but number five there, William Price, would have caught me from behind easily. I've seen you run, and I'm glad that you fessed up to it. You're about a 4'9 guy. Well, you know what? You're about a 4'9 guy yourself these days. I know that I can outrun you. So. Well, maybe, but not by much. <laughs> <laughs> I know J.J. can outrun both of us. <laughs> Without even trying. Well, I'll tell you what. J.J., what a career he's going to have in the pros. 20 carries. 246 yards, and you have to think that not his... Not a bad average. Not a bad average at all, about 14 yards a crack. You have to think that uh, J.J., his stock has risen so much, he's going to be a very high draft pick. Tonight on Channel 4, catch Broncos beat. Peter Rogan and Mark Jackson, they'll bring you up to date on all the Bronco news and give you an inside preview of Monday's game with the Redskins. That's Bronco beat tonight on Channel 4. Give me a little uh, capsule preview. Broncos, Redskins, Monday night, RFK Stadium, 7 o'clock Mountain Time. Mark Ripson. Sounds a little bit like himself. Oh, you know, you get into that mode. Right? How do you see the game? I, I think it'll be a very good game. I think it's one that uh, Denver is, is fully capable of winning. Washington is, has been besieged with injuries. They've got a lot of guys banged up. And, uh, Denver's is playing good football. Defensively, they, they stay in every game. And offensively, the last couple of weeks, they've made the big play when they've had to. So I, I don't think it's an insurmountable task for Denver going to RFK. Got to agree. And of course, the Redskins now without Manley, one of their best defensive players. His career may be uh, in jeopardy. Is on first down the shuttle pass. Speaking of the Broncos, but unlike the Kansas City Chief linebackers, Terry Johnson had it snuffed out. Pat Jackson took the shovel pass. And First time we've seen that in the college game this year. You know, the timing of the play wasn't there. You'll see Watson is looking to pitch this thing for a little bit too long. And actually, you see the running back runs into his offensive lineman. And not much uh, yardage picked up as Pat Jackson gets nailed by Terry Johnson. Hey, you watch them run it and you appreciate Elway and Sewell and the way they run it. you got to have a quarterback that can really run to make that work as Watson... Looking for Jackson, incomplete. Julian Hayward put the hit on there just to be sure, and it's third and eight. I'm sorry, make that great Thomas. Not Julian Hayward. 
Yeah, Manly may be out. The Redskins just uh, decimated with injuries. Doug Williams is out. The Riggs is hurting. Both starting quarterbacks, Wilburn and Green, are long gone. Of course, playing the Redskins, even even uh, beat up in RFK, is much the same as playing the Broncos in, in a similar situation at Mile High Stadium. It's not going to be easy for anybody to go in there and win. It's a good point. They are tough at home. Watson hit from behind, breaks away, fires, caught. Fine catch by Frank Hernandez, his first of the afternoon. And Kansas State has a first down. Out to the Kansas State 35. This is a nice catch by Hernandez, but a great job by Watson avoiding the pass rush. Greg Beekert is there. Looks like he has him. Slips outside and good job by Hernandez going high in the air, coming down and knowing he's going to get tagged. Hernandez, as you see, just a sophomore. He's had a good year. And really compliments uh, the other outside receiver. Penn State now leads Notre Dame 10 to 7 in the second quarter. Watson. And this one is picked off. Rob Hutchins for CU. Inside the 25. Finally brought down by Paul Inikes, the center at the Kansas State 13. Rob Hutchins on the interception. Third pick of the afternoon for the Buffs. I tell you, impressive that he catches the ball, but Rob Hutchins, who uh, prepped at Mitchell High School in Colorado Springs, did a nice job of picking him up and laying him down. Nice little move there. This is a linebacker. Played running back in high school, but I tell you what, Hutchins almost ran that thing back the entire way. CU has it on the Kansas State 14. Hagan still in the game. He needs about 18, 19 yards yet. He knows it. He's been instructed to run, and he will score. And that's for the first time today, we're hearing some boos, and I think some people here are a little upset that Hagan may still be in the ball game. Well, they, they, they probably got a right to be upset, but they, they don't realize as to what they're trying to accomplish here. And I, I'm not in favor of running up on anybody. But you've got to give Darian Hagan a chance to accomplish things when he's been so unselfish this year. And you've, you've pulled him at halftime of three or four games. Untouched into the end zone. And Hagan should be very, very close. I think now he's over the 1,000-yard mark for his season. And I would guess that's the end of Darian Hagan if that back gets true. That'll give him a 1,002. That puts him over. He's done it. He's a thousand thousand man. He's got 156 today. We have a score from and there you see it. First big eight, eight quarterback in history. At the top of thousand yards in Lawrence, rushing Manhattan, seven. and passing. Okay, that's quite an accomplishment when you think of some of the fine running quarterbacks that have played in the big eight conference. Behind George Hemingway and Hagen, all he has to do is make one little dip. You can see Mark Henry, the wide receiver, out there trying to get a block and just enough of the defensive back to allow Hagan to slip into the end zone. So Colorado up at the half, 31-0, now leading 52-8. And I'm sure Bill McCartney explained to Bill Snyder, or will explain, what he wanted to do with Hagan. And I'm convinced that Hagan's afternoon has now come to an end. I don't think Snyder will have a problem with it because I'm sure Bill, before the game, mentioned what he anticipated doing the fans obviously don't realize where Hagen is in terms of his rushing yards and again you, you never like to see anybody running up but when a guy is that close a sophomore who's, who's going for the Heisman and, and he, you're taking him out of four or five games at halftime he number three right there deserves a chance to become one of the elite in the NCAA college football history. And as you mentioned, Ron, only the fifth quarterback to do it. He's got the baseball cap on. He's done for the afternoon. He's in to state some of their fans upset that Scott decides to down it at the goal line. I tell you, when you're down 52 to 8 and you're 1 and 9 coming in, you don't run kickoffs out of the end zone too many times. Hey, Darian Hagan and J.J. Flanagan sporting some of those L.A. Raider baseball caps. We may have to... Uh, they're, they're, they're California guys. Yeah, that's true. They're both from L.A. Knowing you, you'll try to give them Cleveland Brown caps. Like they wear? No. They're L.A. fellas. What, what, what caps will you get? Bronco caps? Oh, Broncos. 
Nuggets. You're a big Bronco fan? Broncos? Nuggets, sure. Absolutely. Maybe the Celtics. Do you pick against the Broncos every week? So, I, I find it hard to believe you are now a Bronco fan. I'm glad you are watching, Dave. Uh, <laughs> I did pick the Broncos this week, by the way. I'll uh, have you know. On <laughs> first and ten, Watson, again running for his life, throws to Smith, bobbles it, hangs on, and he's out to the 29. Scott Hanna made the stop. Picked the Broncos to win many times this year. I'll have you know. Now, when Dan Reeves says, Good job by Watson, just waiting for his receivers to run. He avoids the sack again. Now, here's a catch that, remember the interception, he couldn't make this move. As Michael Smith turns around and makes a terrific catch. Eric Gallen, the fullback, shaken up and is trotting off. See, receivers that, that put numbers on the board like this, and Michael Smith has been a terrific receiver. When you when you look at the numbers that Kansas State has rushing, you can't run the ball at all. And really, you're one of the few weapons that the Wildcats enjoy. When teams come in to play Kansas State, they look and say, let's take Michael Smith out of the football game. And to have well over 60 receptions is a great accomplishment. In the third quarter. Well, we have played three quarters here in Manhattan. Colorado out in front, 52-8. to eight. Don't forget, K-State volleyball game. Ron Zapolo and Dave Logan back in Manhattan for this fourth quarter, which we'll talk about a lot of different things. It's 52 to 8. Fair yes. Hey, Flanagan and Hagen done for the day. Listen to these uh, stats. Flanagan, 20 carries, 246 yards and four touchdowns. Hagen, 28 carries, 156 yards and three touchdowns. That might be, and we don't have this in front of us, but it might be the first time that two backs ever on any team, right, certainly in Colorado history, have rushed for over 400 yards between them. Could very well be. There's a Colorado hat on Darian Hagen. I don't like that. Watson. Gives it to Smith. And he's out near the 40. Lamar Gray. Drove him out, along with help from Doug Atkins. You know, one thing, we've talked about how successful the senior team has been, how successful the Broncos have been. We may have two coaches in Bill McCartney and Dan Reeves who are the college and pro coaches of the year. Couldn't be happier for the both of them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a very good point. I know Bill has to have a leg up on, at least one would think, and Dan Reeves and his club 8-2. and two. I, I would think Dan has, certainly has a shot as well. You bet. Watson throws it out for Smith again as they're trying to get Smith the all-time K-State record. I believe he needed six catches coming in to give him 70. That may have tied the record there. That's his fifth catch. So one more for Smith. We'll get him the record. Well, I believe I'd go ahead and throw it to him every time until he got it. Maybe you just have to throw it out there and let him catch and stand and still. He's got great quickness and, and good speed. He's got great speed. But Michael Smith, uh, as we talked about most of the day, he's probably going to be an all big eight first team performer this year in his sophomore campaign. Oklahoma getting back into the ball game as Dave predicted, 25-15. I tell you, that's a lot more points than I expected in that game in the second quarter. Watson with time. In and out of the hands of Curtis Madden, the sophomore fullback at the Colorado 47. He make a good point. Oklahoma's defense, you know, we did the game, looked tough, and certainly Nebraska scoring early and often. But I have to agree with you. The game is not over, and Oklahoma, down through the years, they, they have found ways, and they're within 10 points. Curtis Madden, number 40, who just dropped that pass from Denison, Texas. And I must say, the... Uh, the first place of my mother. Is that right? And one of the first players in college football that I can remember at least doing a game that hailed from Denison, Texas. That's terrific. Watson. Going deep, and this one is picked off by Tim James. Tim's got it back to the Colorado 30, the fourth interception of the afternoon. Check that, excuse me, it was not Tim James, it was Scott Hanna. Pardon me, Scott Hanna, number 47. Hanna, a fifth-year guy who was hung around, came back from a serious knee injury for the anterior cruciate a couple of years ago, and 
Just a good kid. Plays middle of the field, steps right in and catches the ball. First and 10 for CU. Scott Hanna with the pick, their fourth interception of the afternoon. Charles Johnson, as we thought, now in a quarterback. The handoff to Matt Bell. Bell loses the football on Kansas State. Has it at the Colorado 37. Public came up with the football. We mentioned coming into today's contest, the Buffaloes had lost only six fumbles the entire year. This is number seven as Matt Bell just loses the grasp for the ball on his way down. They've lost at least 10 every year since 62, and it's been a very good year for hanging on the ball. You can see the football clearly gone before Matt Bell is down, and Kansas State able to come up with the recovery for first down. Robert Hubble coming up with a football. Notre Dame now back out in front of Penn State, 14-10. Got a good one going there. Watson has the top. Incomplete. Smith was trying to make a one-hand grab. Hey, while we have a minute, and we certainly have time. I want to say hi to speaking your mom. Say hi to your dad. He's been under the weather. I understand he's doing better. He's back home now. And That's right. Send along our best to your dad. Appreciate it. And since we're doing that family uh, family rejoicing, their 38th wedding anniversary yesterday. It's a nice oh, little love. We hung in there for 38 years. This, I, you know, I'm kind of glad that he dropped the ball because this would have broken the record for Michael Smith. And although a terrific catch, you like to see it on a 15-yard bend in, not a, not a three-yard catch running out of bounds. And I'm sure Smith will have uh, another opportunity to break that Kansas State season record. Watson looking for Smith, and he's got it. And there's the record. Much better. Anna runs him out at the 29. Does somebody get that football. Right, if you're a Kansas State coach, you'll walk, walk right over and pick it up. And put it in the trophy case where it belongs. Yeah, they know it. The new Kansas State career record for the sophomore from New Orleans. There's somebody you can build with. Talking with uh, Kenny Moss on the SID before the game, he said, not only is he a great player, but he's a terrific kid. Good work That's ethic, great. and uh, just a, a hard-nosed player that, again, has literally carried the offensive burden for the Wildcats this year. 69 catches. That's a great job, as Watson calls a timeout. You're on the other end of a lot of passes, taking a lot of hits. 14-10 to go. Come on back. We'll talk about the Orange Bowl. Don't go away. Today, Missouri leads Kansas 14-10 first quarter. Nebraska out in front of Oklahoma 25-15 second quarter. Iowa State leads Oklahoma State 10-7 second quarter. Third and one. Play action. Here comes Gary Howe and Watson. Incomplete looking for Al Jones. A couple other scores, Dave, of interest. Uh, Mississippi leads Tennessee 21-17, third quarter. Iowa leads Purdue 14-0, third quarter. Michigan out in front of Minnesota 35-7, third quarter. Auburn leads Georgia 20-3, fourth quarter. The Tigers have had struggled offensively, but boy, what a defense. Yep, terrific. Of course, the one you're waiting for, Brown out in front of Columbia, 26-21, third quarter. As you look at the stats on Michael Smith, and Watson calls for a timeout. Okay, it's the last game of the year. You've got some timeouts. You might as well use them. Can't, can't save them until next year. And if you don't like what you see on a fourth down and a foot, or fourth down and one yard, go ahead and talk it over with that man, Bill Snyder. Of course, it's our last game of the year, then it's on to the Orange Bowl. We'll, we'll be on Channel 4 throughout that week, but as usual, it has been a sheer joy working with you on the CU game. I think it's good for six years we've done this. Look forward to uh, doing it again next year. I'm sure we're going to have some big games. The Dan Reef Show. It's a special time this week, Tuesday night, after the Monday night game. That's Tuesday night, 6.30, right here on Channel 4, the home of the Broncos. We'll have a player guest talk with Dan, have all the highlights Tuesday night at 6.30.
It's been a good year for you to do the show. Yes, it has. You find the coaches are much more amenable to the press after they win, even on their own show. I mean, they're just in a better mood. Better all around mood. More talkative and it's easier for the host. I remember doing the Bill McCartney show the year after they opened the season with uh, a loss to CSU and I believe lost their four uh, their first four games that that was no fun and there were some tough losses I remember a loss in Oregon on an onside kick lost by one point then right. Oregon recovered kicked the field goal last Ohio State beat them by three in Columbus game at CU had outplayed Ohio State got beat fourth down nice catch and a first down Mike Wheeler brings it in. Running, uh, and you see him saying, I'm going to come out. This ground is hard, and Wheeler finds out how hard it is. That's a nice catch, and flat on his back, Ronnie Bradford comes up to make the tackle. Give him credit for hanging on to the football, but I guarantee his lower back is aching a bit. Spoken by a man who's taken a few shots in that lower back over a long career. I used to be 6'4", now about 6'1 and a half. I'll do it to you. First and 10, ball to Colorado 21. Watson has some time. Complete to Hernandez at the 5. Greg Thomas makes the stop with a pickup of 15 and a first down for Kansas State. Well, you're going to be able to find somebody in the seam against his own defense. Watch the time that Watson has. You'll see the linebackers drop straight back, steps back inside, and there's Hernandez in between the safeties and behind the linebackers. And I think one of the reasons that CU will benefit from playing a great team like Notre Dame as opposed to playing Miami is because Miami is a prolific passing offense, and CU matches up better against a team that likes to line up and run at them. That's what the Fighting Irish will do on New Year's Day. First and goal for the Wildcats. Here comes the rush. Oh. Eric Gallon was met by Doug Atkins at about the six, and that's a big price to pay for a pickup of a yard. See, Eric Gallon wishes, I don't think it's going to be a completion, but wishes he could move that right eye to find the linebacker and keep the left eye on the ball. I know he's there, and there he is, the ball. See, I don't think he ever caught the ball. The ball is on the ground, and it almost looked like uh, it was pinned against Gallon's shoulder pad. So they may not give him the completion. Even if they did, it would only be a slight pickup. Second and goal. Let's see, maybe he did give him the reception. Move it to the six. 13 minutes on the nose to go in the game. Watson with time. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now, Greg Thomas could have had a 99-yard interception return for a touchdown because you can tell what he's thinking. There was nobody in front of him. Kansas State assistant coaches are up here, and as soon as he let this one go, they said, no! Uh, Greg Thomas makes a clean cut of the ball. It, the ball's actually behind Thomas. He gets there so quickly, and as you mentioned, he sees 99 yards of daylight in front of him, but forgets the primary objective, and that's to catch the ball first. But that would have been a play that Greg Thomas, for the rest of his life, would have never forgotten. It might be a few years before he forgets it anyway. Referees now stop things for a minute. Could I ask you, does this seem like the slowest three minutes, actually two minutes in the history of any fourth quarter action that you've ever seen? Pretty much, and basically because we're up here, 12 minutes and 54 seconds, I would swear that we were under 10 minutes about four minutes ago. If you're in the stands, you can do other things. There's Watson. Here comes the rush, and down he goes, Lamar Gray. The junior from Pomona on the sack, back at the 12-yard line. Lamar Gray is a guy that uh, plays behind Alfred Williams and Canavis McGee, but he's a very good player in his own right. Speed rush upfield, and he gets to Watson before he has any chance to look downfield. Pomona, California, same place that the J.J. Flanagan hailed as a youngster. So Kansas State will go for the field goal. The spot will be at the 19. David Kruger, 6 of 11 on field goals this year. An attempt from 29 yards. And he has it. So Kruger, a 29-yard field goal. 
Let's go down to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh. Yeah, I was talking on the sidelines with J.J. Flanagan and Darian Hagan, and Flanagan's at, what, 250-plus on the day. Hagan was encouraging him to go over to Coach McCartney and say, hey, put you back in the ball game before he could go after Anthony Thompson's record this year of 377 yards. Thompson, of course, from Indiana. Hagan was telling him, hey, man, you can get that in one quarter, and Flanagan said, no way. I'm not pressing my luck today. Back up steady. Return down the sidelines by Dwayne Davis, the freshman from Gulfport, Mississippi. I don't think Bill McCartney wants to uh, score again. He wants to keep the ball and grind out some first downs, and he's the last guy that wants to run things up. Dwayne Davis, great athlete. They actually, at one point, thought about moving him to wingback. Well, see how it went down. Going to leave him a defense, but uh, Long Strider, and he's going to be a guy along with a number of other ones that you hear a lot about in the next three years. Ball is at the 44. Charles Johnson, the quarterback, the goaler 40, Simmons 42, and Bell 31. The backs, this is Matt Bell up in the middle. Ball carrying number 31. To about the 47, yeah. Hennessy. Stop by number 54, Hennessy. Made the stop with help from Hubble. There's some interesting maneuvers. What do you think about the Orange Bowl? We'll be down there all week. Uh, have a lot of reports for you. Dave will be there, of course, doing his radio show uh, from Miami. He'll be with me on four. Uh, how do you uh, how do you view the Orange Bowl? Well, I think it's going to be a great game. I mean, Notre Dame, and by the way, the Fighting Irish currently leading Penn State 21 to 10. Uh, that's a very good football team. They've got the entire package, and it, I think it'll be a game of big plays. Uh, turnovers as those kind of games usually are. Whichever team can avoid those and make some of the big, big plays stands a pretty good chance to win. I, I think Colorado has enough offense that uh, they'll be able to put some points on the board. I do think Notre Dame will do something similar. And it's going to be one to, to look forward to. Tennessee made the tackle on Johnson. It's third and five. The ball is on the 49. It's going to be a tremendous game. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You just don't know when something like this ever happens again. As Johnson trips, stays up, running. Now he'll run. He's got room. He's got the first down. Finally nailed by Hubble again, the freshman. But he's down to the Kansas State 42. And that's a Colorado first down. Charles Johnson does two things here that you like to see. One, he pulls it down when nobody's open. And number two, he realizes that when you cut across the grain, somebody usually is going to nail you from the backside. Now watch him take a peek back to the inside and actually able to avoid a, a real tough hit as Hubble's chasing him downfield. He looks a lot like Darian Hagan. Uh, in, in terms of how he runs the offense and his ability to make people miss. First and ten. The handoff to DeGoler, who was moved to fullback a while back. He's to the 45. You know, Charles Johnson on senior hit day a few days back. Arthur Walker calling Johnson out to Walker 285 pounds. Johnson maybe 165. And Johnson took some abuse there from Walker. See those defensive linemen, they don't get hit quarterbacks too many times in practice right. anyway. So the day of that when you play oh, yeah, senior, senior hit day is one of the one of the, uh, the the true fun days that you can see uh, they, they've actually changed heads of the uh, the mascots. Chip <laughs> wearing the Wildcat head and vice versa. Here's Bell down to about the 36. Ball may be loose. Kansas State thinks they have it. No sign from the officials. It appears that I think the officials marked the, uh, the ball dead, judging from uh, their reaction. Were you ever uh, called out? Any senior underclassmen, any seniors that call you out? A couple of times. I actually got a call out to my roommate when I was a senior. Don, Matt, Don, yeah, Hasselbeck. Don Hasselbeck. Don, uh, Matt Bell is going to, that, that, that ball is a fumble. fumble. And Colorado retains possession. I can tell you this, Matt Bell is going to hear a lot from Bill McCartney about holding on to the ball, even in a game like this. So you getting a break as they keep the football, Johnson? Inside the 30, down to about the 28. Senior hit day, for, for those that uh, don't know what we're talking about, on your last day of, of hitting in the regular season, which is usually Wednesday, which it was this past week, the seniors can call out any player they want to, and you line up about seven yards apart, and you run into each other, which sounds a bit primitive, I'm sure, to those who aren't involved in football, but it's a lot of fun, and it's been a, a ritual at the University of Colorado for years. Matter of fact, back in the early 70s, we used to, the guy that we called out had to stand there defenseless. We put a mat behind him, and you just drill him into the ground. And so that's just not fair. Well, it's fun, though. It's fun, as Johnson is down to the 26, where Hennessy makes the stop. I mean, Mark McIntosh did a very cute piece on it uh, this week. It's, 
Bill Coleman did a little WWF wrestling uh, with Neil Schlesinger. It really was cute. McCartney said, as always, the, the key thing is, is that nobody was injured. That's right. Hey, when you got Arthur Walker calling out Charles Johnson, you have to worry about it. In fact, apparently the deal is, you can, as a senior, you can call anybody you want. Anybody. But McCartney did say that there was one man this year who was off limits. Darian Hagen. <laughs> Darian Hagen. There'll be nobody calling Darian Hagen out. Of course, you can get by because Hagen technically was banged up in the last game against OSU, but we all know why he wasn't called out. Second and seven. Michael Simmons, the ball carrier. You can see what they're doing. Chip has been kidnapped. Tell you what, in Lincoln, Nebraska 25, Oklahoma 18 at the half. Iowa State leads Oklahoma State 17-7 at the half. Missouri leads Kansas 14-13. Second quarter, Auburn the final beat Georgia 20 to 3. Here's the pitch to Collier in the game. And it's down to about the 20. Freshman from San Bernardino, California. Good looking freshman. Bill McCartney really likes to his car too. His vision and, and making the right choices when he has the football. I think uh, Collier will be a guy that in time will see quite a bit of action. Tennessee has come back. They now lead Mississippi 26-21 in the fourth quarter. In behind the whole afternoon. Florida leads Kentucky 31 to 14 fourth quarter. How are we doing on uh, Brown and Columbia? Brown and Columbia. Brown has moved out now to a 41-28 third quarter lead over the Lions. Been a tough decade for the Lions as the goaler takes it down to about the 18. That clock. I'm not sure he made the first down too as CU goes for it on fourth and about two yards. It'll be close, but I think I think he may have enough. Scott DeGola, our jack of all trades. He's played defense, he's played offense, special teams, and does a little bit of everything for CU. But they You're right. It. Didn't make it. Kansas State takes over on downs at the 18. Six and a half minutes left in the regular season. I know you'll be down in Miami with those uh, little uh, drawings on your cheek. See you. <laughs> well, in that case, I will do that, of course, if you do. Well, I'll be right there with you. <laughs> First and ten. As we wrap up what has been a very long finale, I think it's long for us. I mean, Perry Watson. How many times has he been hit today? He's getting up in about seven different directions at this point. Well, he's been sacked a number of times, but he's been knocked down many, many more. Watson, as we've said, was injured this year. He separated his shoulder trying to make a tackle after he threw an interception against Missouri. He also was carried off on a stretcher after injuring his back, and he didn't have time to even go back. On his fifth step, he's trying to avoid the rush, which is already in his lap. So, tough day for the quarterbacks of Kansas State. Gary Howe, the junior from Spencer, Iowa, got the sack. He is... He's one guy you always notice when he's in there. He's going to play a lot next year. I say the good thing about how he's extremely active. He's, he's tough to block. He's playing with a cast on his right hand, number 95. So he, he's playing at a disadvantage as far as grabbing the offensive lineman and, and twisting him as he tries to make an attempt to get to the quarterback. But uh, how I think you'll you'll hear a lot of they're supposed to take the cast off before the Orange Bowl, and uh, I would guess he'll play a lot. I think next year you'll see Steve and Howe up there. You lose Walker and Salavea, so you know you'll have Steve and Howe. You'll see more of Lamar Gray, Marcellus Elder, Leonard and Leonard Renfro. Renfro. And, and let's not forget Jim Hansen either. And Jim Hansen. So you'll, those will be the six guys up front that'll play the majority of the time. You'll still have Williams and McGee back. You lose Michael Jones. Gary Howe has the safety go. And there's a flag. We'll wait and sort it out. It looked like Howe had the sack of Watson in the end zone. I can tell you what they're going to call is Greg Beaker had a chance for an interception. I think it's going to be intentionally Round initial it. grounding. If that is the case and he's in the end zone, it's going to be a safety. Now, you'll, you'll see it for yourself. Watson goes back, and he knows he's in trouble right away. Howe was on him. He tackled that. Now, Watson realizes he's going to fall down in the end zone, so he just throws the ball away. And Greg Beaker says, here I come. Oh, no. 
has a chance to catch it. I, I think what you're going to have here is a safety call against Kansas State. Well, he's picked up the flag and evidently he's going to say that this is, uh, is a legitimate throw. What this is, is the guy realizing I'm about to go down the end zone and let me get rid of this. If this was the NFL, that is what commonly is referred to as in the grasp. That should have been a safety. He's been in the grasp the entire afternoon. Yes, he has. His whole day was starting in the grasp. I'll tell you, two guys that are going to be frustrated oh. about this game are Gary Howe. And Greg Beaker. And, and Greg Beaker. He ran right through the ball. Look out. Nice return by McLuhan. Takes it down to the Kansas State 35. Nice return by number 12, McLuhan. Five and a half minutes left in Manhattan. Some changes for the Buffs. Mark Walters the, becomes the third quarterback of the afternoon. The goaler, Simmons and Collier are the backs. This is Collier with a hole. Dennis down to the 25, and that will be close to another Colorado first down. Collier, the freshman, 5'11", 195 pounds. They've run the isolation before, and good job up front. See a good surge by the offensive line. And anytime you see that back in an eye formation pop through that clean, you know the fullback has done a great job. And in that case, Scott DeGoler with a good block in the linebacker. It's so a first down. The ball is at the 25. Tony Senna in the game. Walters, the pitch to Bell. That's running hard. He's inside the 20, down to about the 18. Ball carrier number 31, Bell. Marcus Henry the stop. makes the stop. Roger Green. Green. Matt Bell, who had a, excuse me, run a good game against Iowa State when he had a chance to play out of Thomas Jefferson. That's right. Got that left ankle taped heavily. He's had a, actually hurt the ankle in the Iowa State game. Well, imagine a year like this, how much easier it must be for Bill McCartney and the staff to recruit. Of course, Rick George, the recruiting coordinator, does a great job as the goaler. Takes it down to about the 14. Rick George on the road and at home with a call, calling potential recruits during games, especially when they're on TV, telling them that even though they're, they're playing today, they're involved with that. They haven't forgot the recruits. Makes his job easier. See you about to crack the 500-yard mark rushing as Bill McCartney looks on. Nebraska had 542 against Kansas State. And of course, they've had problems stopping the run all year. Timeout. Charge to Kansas State with 408 to go in the game. Dave Logan's head has just hit the table as we are at the three-hour mark and counting still with 408 to go if you want to be a part of the studio audience for the dan reeves show just send a self-addressed stamped envelope with your choice of days to dan reeves tickets post office box 5012 ta denver colorado 80217 that's the dan reeves show special time this week tuesday at 6 30 right here on channel 4 they will be your door i might do that we'll be escorting you do you see? You might sit there in that uh, special studio audience. And do they let you? Well, you know, you've sat there. You've had the privilege that two of us have had of sitting in that uh, auditorium there out of the Broncos in that in that uh, room and having your own seat at least for a short few weeks. Of time. Few weeks. <laughs> That's right. You had the proverbial cup of coffee there, but you, you got to see Dan uh, in a different way than most of us. Had, had that no cream in my coffee. No, no cream in your coffee. The uh, studio audience. Uh, are they allowed to pose questions? But yes. After the show, we. Uh, what about during the show? Not really during. We, we do have one live question. Why would you let the studio audience? Well, we used, we used to do that, but they always ask questions like, so you, you stifle creativity. Like, Dan, how's the injury situation? Well, what's wrong with that? Well, that's my question. Folks, <laughs> <laughs> stick with us. There's less than five minutes to go. Big hole for Collier. He is down inside the 10. Pick up a five. Second down and five. Dave, I will see you in Miami. That's where we'll be. We'll be the guys with the smiles on our faces. Don't go away because after the game, we plan on going live to the CU locker room.
where we may have the presentation of the Big 8 trophy. Orange Bowl folks will be there as well as Walter is inside the five, twists and turns, and he's down near the goal line. I tell you, you really have to admire the, the courage of Mark Walters, who suffered a couple of uh, serious knee injuries, decided he was going to retire from football. See, he was banged up in, in the spring practice, and Walters came back and offered his services. He's a, probably a little bit better thrower than running the option, but you see a guy kind of tipping through the secondary, and you just have to tip your hat to Mark Walters. That you do. You saw Mark Henry there, the sophomore wide receiver. He's been in the game this series. Backup line, Schlesner, Russ Heasley, Greg Gould, 321 to go, and CU finishes a perfect regular season. As we've got a man down for Kansas State. Let's give you a plug while you get a chance. You'll be going on doing the uh, Big 8 college basketball uh, package for Raycon. Doing a fine job. I catch many of those games. I'll tell you what, Kansas State is going to have... Uh, Many more opportunities in basketball. They'll have a player, good team. Number 33. Sign on with Channel 4 this season to help the Mercy Medical Center care for Denver's Navy during the Broncos' regular season. Your punch for every quarterback sacked by the Broncos will go directly to Mercy. Pick up a pledge card at any King Supers, Wendy's, Gart Brothers, Dave Cook, or through the St. Anthony's Hospital System. Uh, Steve Pallura was the latest victim. As uh, that one big sack there. And, Fumble recovery by Greg Cragen turned out to be the only touchdown of that game last Sunday. From the goal line. Here's the pitch to Collier. Touchdown. Next down to Colorado by number 29, Collier. So the beat goes on for CU. Extra point will make it 59 to 11. We have done some blowouts throughout our uh, years with CU, but this one, Dave, would have to rank right up there. <laughs> a, dubi I, a dubious distinction, well, indeed. Well, when I say rank, I'm not sure how I mean that. <laughs> Collier, as we mentioned, is uh, a good look at running back, runs through arm tackles, and just needs a chance to play. Of course, that's the case for most young kids when they come out of high school. Culbertson. That's the extra point. It is now 59 to 11. Let's go into the locker room now and Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much, Ron. There's nobody in here right now, but in just a few moments, this place will be going crazy as Big 8 Commissioner Carl James will be in here to present the Buffs the Big 8 Championship Trophy and also Steve Hatchell, the Executive Director of the the Orange Bowl in Miami will be in here to formally announce the bid to bring the Buffs to Miami to play another day, and we'll be in here live to bring it all to you. Back upstairs. Thanks, Mark. Look forward to that. 59 to 11. What a year it's been. I mean, how could you... You could not write a script about this year and sell it to anybody because they would tell you it's just too far-fetched. All the things that have happened from way back when, in the spring, when Bill McCartney reacting to many of the off-the-field problems that went public with his defense of his program, did it very eloquently, and then, of course, the tragic uh, news about Salinesi and his brilliant fight, valiant effort to beat cancer. What has happened all year, CU opened strong with a win Monday night against Texas, came back, beat CSU. Went to Washington with a very heavy heart. So Nessie had passed away, blew out the Huskies. And I don't know what more you can say. It has just been a dream season. Scott, for the Wildcats, is out to the 35 with three minutes even to go in the game. I'm sure Carl James in the Big 8 uh, conference office thrilled with what Colorado has accomplished this year. They should be very, very proud of a team that, uh, as you mentioned, Ron, has had to overcome so many obstacles. And Nebraska is a highly ranked team as well. So you, you've got two teams in the Big 8 Conference this year that more than likely will wind up in the, in the nation's top 10, maybe in the top five when the final polls are registered. But Colorado, clearly the Big 8 champion this year. Undisputed. 
Played them all and beat them all. Speaking of playing them all and beating them all, Nebraska and uh, Oklahoma getting together. The Huskers have scored in the third quarter. They lead Oklahoma 32 to 18. Matt Garber, a freshman quarterback from Sabitha, Kansas, the fourth quarterback on the roster, is in the ball game. So they are giving Paul Watson a break here. Pitch goes outside to Antoine Dulon, junior running back from Topeka. They've got some uh, they've got some interesting names here in this wild game. And they're all getting a chance to play right now. I want to make sure, in this case, obviously, both teams get everybody in. Let them have a chance to play, unless you intend to redshirt them. And last game of the season, uh, for all the hard work, and whether you're 0 and 10 or 1 and 11 or 11 and 0, you work very, very hard as a college football player before and during the season. Let you play. We are under two minutes to go. It's third and five for the Wildcats. Play action, Garber. Throws to Freeman at the tight end, and he's got enough for a first down. He's out the midfield. Clock stops for a minute. 39 to go. In a game that is dragged to a conclusion. First down, Kansas State, 49-yard line. Of course, Dave, we were caught on the satellite back in Ames uh, singing at one point. Uh, yes, we were. In the break, we did not feel compelled today in Manhattan <laughs> to do the same. Didn't want to run off the entire audience, I think. I think the game pretty much did that. Uh, as Barber pitching out here to Dulon. And he's hit by Gray, and there's no game. Dulon down at the 50. 11-0, perfect record for the first time ever in Colorado history. It'll be their fourth Orange Bowl appearance. See you, 1-2 in the Orange Bowl. Of course, Dave Logan's years, they could never get to the Orange Bowl. <laughs> and one final shot. Oh, man. Uh, that's all right. A national championship ring, I think, would, uh, I'll, I'll certainly wear one. You'll wear one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wear it with pride. Too. Barber with a minute to go, with time, over the middle, incomplete. Closest man to the ball was Scott Hanna. As the uh, TV voice of the Buffs, you might even get it. Oh, this is, I don't know. Would you wear one? Uh, with, with pride. With pride. Of course, you're, you're a bit more gaudy than most, and you wear this, this jewelry. I'm not sure you'd have room to wear a national championship. Uh, what, do you see any jewelry on these hands? The Mr. T starter kit uh, <laughs> wouldn't would look much better on you. Just this because one. you interviewed Deion Sanders this week, there's no reason to confuse Neon Dion with your friend here. 56 seconds to go. Kansas State trying to get that final score of the year. Garber, plenty of time. Passes down to the 42 where David Bowman makes the catch. Rob Hutchins makes the tackle. Think he's enjoyed the afternoon? And pads are already off. Pads are off. Four to three, 42 yard line. Cup of ice. Talking with the fellas. Doesn't get much better than when you're 11 and 0, does it? Doesn't get any better. No. This should be the last play of the game. But it won't be as Smith can't find a handle with 10 seconds. Left in this 59 to 11 Colorado victory. Remember, we'll be in the locker room for all the festivities. Don't forget the special edition of the Bill McCartney Show from Miami, Saturday night, December 30th at 7, right here on Channel 4. We'll see you in Miami. And we can catch the VIA uh, heat down there one night. Oh, I certainly hope so. I haven't looked at the <laughs> I've been seeing Ronnie Cycling, I can tell you that. I know you're a big John Sunbold fan. And yes. Looks like Mad Dog, uh, Jeff Madden, just doused there with a uh, bucket of water. 
and the clock runs out. Colorado with the finishing touches on a perfect season, bumping and all, 59 to 11. Could not be any happier for that man right there who has seen and done it all. And He's at the top now, and it's well deserved. And I think the thing that makes it that much nicer, again, it was a long, long, long climb to the top. He, he inherited the program, but was at the depths of despair, and has changed the, the fortunes of this team through hard work, honest effort, and you can commend Bill McCartney and his staff for what has turned out to be a, a fairy tale like season. Had a nice chat there with Bill Snyder, as I'm sure he explained the situation to him. Didn't look like there was any animosity between the two. You just, you look at Bill McCartney and you know what he's been through the last couple of years. And it's all, as you said, it's all the much sweeter now that he's enjoying what could be a national championship season for the University of Colorado. There's a shot of the Buffs coming in. John Bowman leading the way. Rod Scott. A lot of uh, things are going to happen as they're tossing oranges to uh, all the players and staff. Sean Embry, the uh, freshman, dropping his orange. <laughs> Arthur Walker, I'm sure Arthur will have something to say after the game. Chad Brown. George Hemingway. <laughs> as they make their way in. Dr. Gerso. It's a special moment. It really is. When you it's never happened before in CU history. 11 games, 11 victories in one regular season. Never happened before in 100 years of Colorado football. That was Bill Morolt there next to Bill McCartney as they walked in. That is Rick George. So let's talk a minute about Bill Morolt. After a 1-10 in 10 season in 84, Bill Morolt extends a five-year extension to Bill McCartney. And I think you have to applaud what Bill Morolt uh, did in a situation like that. He had uh, a lot of confidence in his coach. He showed that through the extension. and. He's got to feel very pleased with what has transpired this year, too. Well said. Bill Morold's done an excellent job as the AD at Colorado, and he's played a big role in putting this program on the map, and it is certainly there now. Colorado does it all as they finish the regular season perfect, and now it is on to Miami. We'll be back to Manhattan in a minute. Zapolo and Dave Logan back in Manhattan where Colorado steamrolled their way past the Wildcats 59 to 11. Now they can set their sights for the next six weeks on a national championship game. Let me ask you, does it make any difference from the Colorado perspective how Notre Dame finishes these last two regular season games? Uh, I, I think now Notre Dame is a, is a lock to go to the Orange Bowl. We'll turn to hear from Steve Hatchel, uh, but I think Notre Dame is a very worthy opponent, and I suspect they'll come in with no more than one loss at the very worst. All right, let's head now to the CU locker room and Mark McIntosh. Uh, we're, the cap we're here in the locker room. Coach Bill McCartney and Steve Hatchell, the executive director of the Orange Bowl. We're getting ready to make the presentation of the Orange Bowl right here. Steve, if you can... Let us turn it over. You all can enjoy the locker room festivities here. It's Steve Hatchell. Uh, who's doing what? Uh, Steve, where are you? Okay. Okay. Art Hurts of the Orange Bowl Committee will present. On behalf of the Orange Bowl Committee, its offices and staff, uh, we hereby invite you to be our home team. Buffaloes, and I've had over 200 call me for tickets. Everybody is so proud of you and what you have done. This is a great, great moment for every Buffalo that ever wore a chin strap. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Jim 
All the captains are now getting up there with Coach McCartney. We're in the middle of this madhouse. Here it is. The seniors will sing the Orange Bowl song. Let's go, three. One, two, one, two, three. Five, two. It feels great, man, and uh, I'm really proud of our guys. Everything that a guy could want out of coaching, we're experiencing that right now, and I couldn't be more thankful. Notre Dame, you got them coming up January 1st. You win that game, you're the national champion. That's right, and, and uh, Notre Dame's a great opponent, wonderful tradition, the premier team in college football right now. What a great opportunity for us. And, We'll do our best to prepare thoroughly and give them everything they want. Speaking of preparations, tell us how you will prepare. When do you start? When are you heading for Miami? Well, uh, we'll take some time off now, and then when we come back, uh, we'll have one week of practice in Boulder, and we'll go out to Miami on the 22nd of December. And uh, we'll practice out there uh, right out up to game time. If there was a turning point in the season, then you knew it would be a special season. Is there anyone that sticks out? Well, uh, probably getting off to a good start against Texas. Uh, Texas a quality opponent, and we got off and, and got it going. And then when we went to Seattle, the week of Sal's death, uh, that'll always stick with me as a very critical time in this season. And we responded. Uh, we put that tremendous sadness behind us. and responded with a great victory. Yeah, I think that's when everybody around this team knew that this was going to be a special year, the way these kids responded to such a tragedy. I agree. I agree. And, and uh, of course, to go through that non-conference schedule unbeaten was a, a really a, a accomplishment. And um, everything that a college football team could want, it's right there for us right now. Coach, congratulations. Enjoy. Thanks, Mac. Coach Bill McCartney, the undefeated Colorado Buffaloes, the Big Eight champs for 1989. Back upstairs are Ron and Dave. We have a